Hello, let's go. Hello. I am pulling things out of, I just pulled things out of the pressure pot. I am pulling these out as late as possible because I might not even unmold these yet. I might unmold these a little bit further into the stream. So I really, I pulled these out a little bit early so that I could, you know, didn't have to do the, open up the pressure pot on stream, but let me just set these off to the side for now and we'll, we'll unmold these in a little bit. Give them a little bit more time because I don't know that they're completely cured yet. I mean, I know they're not completely cured yet, but I don't want to get fingerprints in them or something. They should be okay outside of the pressure pot, but let's, uh, we'll give them a, a, another few minutes or half an hour or something like that. Uh, that back. Anyways, welcome. I have, ooh, actually, that's kinda, I like those colors together. Those are kind of pretty. I've got a couple things to work on. I have a new commission set that I'm working on here. Um, that's the, the desert dice that are mentioned in the title. And then, hmm, maybe I could do something with these colors. That's going to sit there for a minute, too, because it's also still a little bit soft. Um, I'll pull dice out of the pressure pot sometimes, like, about an hour like four like after about 20 hours um and we're very we're on the cusp of that right now yeah because i i think i put those in the pressure pot at about 11 30 last night and it's seven so that's we'll give those at least another half an hour before i start messing with them uh, i got a few things to work on though and messing with these should be fine. I'm not taking these out of the mold. We're just going to be gluing some things into it. So it should be okay. Because what I'm doing here is... I made a whole bunch... This is uh, for a commission. I made a whole bunch of little tiny cactuses of varying types. Just a second here. Let me spread this out a little bit so you can kind of see some of them. See if I can do it so they focus. A bunch of little little cactuses of varying types. Let's, let's flip over there. We go. No, just all just little cactuses, uh, and we're gonna put some of those in in this, and then do a second layer. This this first layer is just the just the sand in the bottom. Oh, it's kind of hard to see a little bit. It's kind of yellowish. I, I put a little. Oh, here the D4 is probably gonna be the easiest to see. Maybe. Let me try to see the color. There we go. I put a little bit of like a like a darker brownish color on top, just to be like you know some desert sort of of foliage a little bit, and then it's kind of a sandy sandy orange color under that. And then we're gonna we're gonna glue some of these little these little cactus fellas uh, on top of that, and then fill it with clear. And there'll be little whole set of of little dice with uh, deserts in them. Uh, and then I got a couple other little things. What did I do with that die? Did I throw that in my, my dice box? Might be my spare dice box. Oh, yes it is, okay. Um, I was making a die, I, I did this already. Um, I made a D6 that had a couple of little chess pieces in it. But it didn't quite turn out how I would have liked. Uh, the chess pieces are just a little bit hard to see. And they're not quite as centered as I would have liked. A couple of knights. Uh, let me see if I can get a background for this so you can see. I'll just grab a, just grab a white paper towel. And I'll see if I can make it so you can, you can see the knights in there. Which is the issue is that they're, they're hard to see. Oops, that's the problem with this. Come on, find it, camera. Never wants to find it for me. Can you find my hand? Sometimes if it sees my hand, it'll focus. But it doesn't seem to want to this time. It's always very persnickety. Oh, 
Eh. Doesn't seem to be. Doesn't seem to be finding it. All that. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but yeah, there's some there's some little some little knights in here, but they're kind of hard to see, and they're they're kind of sunk down a little bit more than I would have liked. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna remake that. I made a couple more little a couple more little knights in in blue and gold, and we're gonna try it again. Try and try and suspend them in the li in the middle a little bit better. I'll add that back to my my miscellaneous uh, dice box. Couple new things in here. I like this one. It's just clear and bright pink. Um, yeah, these are. This is just random raw dice, which are, are on my Etsy if that's something that interests you. But it's all random dice. Uh, I do have what I hope is going to be a solution for. Uh, in the same set with the, the knight, I have been trying to do a D10 that has snakeskin in it, um, but it's been very hard to see, uh, what with the dark blue and then like the red, like that other guy. Here, I can show you. I have that in here as well. Pretty sure. Uh, here's an example. It's just been, oops. Yeah, it doesn't want to focus, but it wants to focus. There we go. See, it's just kind of hard to see in there. And I did a couple things, I think, to, you know, make it a little bit more visible. There was this one, and then there was... Actually, I don't know which one of these was first. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But I think I've made it so that the snake skin will, will stand out. But we'll, we'll look at that once I let these sit for... Let these sit for a little bit longer, and we can we can take them out of the molds. Cause, like you can, you can you know, I can show you how soft this stuff it still is. It should be you know cured enough that it won't get a whole bunch of air bubbles, but I can still leave a thumbprint in it. You can see there. Just that's where I just put my thumb against it, so it's still it's still pretty soft, which makes it hard to take get off of here as well, which is why I haven't hold this off yet. It's very, yeah, it's very sticky. So, we'll give that, give that, a, oops, I completely just missed my scrap uh, box, but that's okay. I landed in the mixing cup. But yeah, so for today, we're gonna, we're gonna make that new D6. We're gonna put the, the little cactuses and the desert dice and, and finish those up. And then I made some new terrarium dice fairly recently, um, but I had a couple of them that didn't turn out. Uh, this one had like a random piece of resin in it and the mold has an issue around one of the numbers. So we're gonna, we're gonna remake these two as well for the set. Um, this one's, this one's not too bad, but everything just kind of floated. Um, it has a, it has like an earwig in it. Let's see if I can show you. Hard to see. There's there's an earwig in it though, and it floated to the top, and so did kind of the moss and stuff a little bit too. So like this one's this one's definitely usable and everything, but it's just, eh, I'd just rather redo it. So we're gonna do that. I'll have to I'll have to pull out some plants for that. Um, so we've got those. Got that whole lineup. Um, and then I got some stuff in the mail. We'll see if they show up because one of one of my lovely Twitch uh, folks here got me a couple of things from Culture Hustle, which is a like an art supply place, uh, and they got me black 1.0 and they got me diamond dust. So this is a, a very very dark black pigment, and then this is like. It's supposed to be very, very glittery. Hey! Speak of the devil. Guess what I got in? I was gonna, I was gonna send you a photo, but I, I figured I could just tell you on stream that they, they arrived. I, I must say my favorite one, well, a thing that I, I very much enjoyed 
And I've removed my, my address from here. But something that I very much enjoyed was that this was uh, addressed to Liz Zaster. <laughs> That's just, that was just very, that was very amusing to me when I, I saw that in the mailbox. Because I was just like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That, that makes sense. <laughs> I thought that was very funny. Um, but I, I do want to try these in a set of dice. I don't know if this is going to show up. Exactly, I know. I, uh, it made sense to me that you don't know my last name. Uh, and so it was just, it was just like... I'm like, this makes perfect sense, but it's also very funny to me. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know how well this is going to show up in dice. Um, we might have to find a different use for this. I do think we could do this with some resin. But maybe if I did like... Hmm. This is also crushed glass. So... It's a very catchy name, Lizaster. I th think my friend Chris came up with it. I haven't talked to him in a while, actually. I think I think he came up with it. Maybe. I was trying to think of like some sort of of new online handle for things. Um, but I am I am curious to try this. Sealed for your protection. I wonder... I do wonder if this is... Any... If how this compares to, like, the, um... Activated charcoal that I have in color. Um, uh, uh, a couple things that I want to do with this, I think. I want to do... I want to, you know, try making a set of dice with, with these, because they're fun new things. I also want to do a little test swatch of the black. So I have all of my all of my test swatches of, of all my different colors and things. Some of which aren't actually pigment, some of them is things like cloves. <laughs> or well, there's wasabi powder in here somewhere too. Where's the wasabi powder? There's my wasabi powder. Well, here's cumin, which I did actually use for the desert dice. Where's the wasabi? Oh, here's the wasabi powder. If you wanted a good, if you need a good like swamp green, there's wasabi powder. But I do want to, I do want to do a little uh, test one of these with this black, just so I can, I can see how it compares to my other ones, because they are all, you know, slightly different. And I don't think you're going to be able to see the difference necessarily. Um, but some of them are. Translucent. Wait, let me. I can make it so you can see which ones are translucent and which ones aren't. Let me turn my. Let me just put that on. So you can see that one. That one's translucent. You can see the light through it. That's kind of a bluish purple color to it, um, which is the the alcohol ink that I have. This is the. This one's a little bit, not quite as as cool toned. I actually think this one's a little bit more black black, um, which is the resin pigment one that I have. And then I have a resin colorant that I got that you use a little bit and it, that stuff's opaque. Uh, and then I've also used activated charcoal, which is another good opaque black. But I've, I've been very curious to try the, let me close that. I've been very curious to try some of the, the Culture Hustle Stuart Semple things. So thank you very much for sending these to me, Bosun. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if this is how well this is gonna work in dice though. Mm -hmm. We'll try it. We'll try it. But I'm I don't know. I don't know. My 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 concern with this is that it's going to blend in with the resin and so you won't actually see any of the refraction it'll probably just be like glitter uh, to be fair well uh yeah i think i think i could use it as glitter maybe but my yeah my concern with the resin is that it's going to have the exact same um what is, i don't know what what you would call it not refraction opacity 
I guess the exact same opacity and tone as the resin, so it will just blend in with it. Because it is just like, yeah, it's refractive properties too. Actually, yeah, I think I worry that it'll have the exact same refractive properties as the as the resin, and so it'll it'll just blend in with the resin because it is it is clear. And part of the reason that it's so glittery is just because it's small pieces. You're more scared to clean up. It, to be fair. I think I'll be okay. It's in actually larger pieces than I thought it was going to be. I hope I'm not getting this everywhere. Hmm. Yeah, because it is it is like crushed glass. Use like glitter, keep out of reach of kids, handle carefully can cause splinters. Yeah, it's yeah, it's very very glittery, but it is bigger it's kind of like bigger pieces than I Expected, so that's actually probably better. I think that'll be easier for cleanup. You can kind of see there. But it is very much clear. So we'll see how that works with the resin. Um, so I do need to figure out how exactly I want to try these out. And then is that everything that I want to do? Let me just let me just think on this for a second. Let me let me just think on this. Okay, so that'll be this will be another set of dice. So I'll have two sets of dice and a few. And then maybe I'll use the last little bit of resin to finally finish up these dominoes. I think I need to do a little bit of cleanup on this before I before I pour the last little bit of resin on, but that might be that might be a good plan. So we'll do, I think we'll do, end up doing that. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that will work out. So let me just try and clean these up a little bit. There's enough little pieces of resin around the edges here. I want to get that off so that we don't, I'd, I'd, I, you know, I'd, I'd like to have as little cleanup as possible with the, with these dominoes. And I think that actually it's not going to be a big, cleaning, this, cleaning these up isn't going to be a big deal because I think I could just sand the sides. Because they're all pretty flat. I think I could just sand the sides of the dominoes and leave them matte. I don't even need to polish them or anything. I think that would look nice. Have the, have the you know, the front and the back shiny, but then have like the sides be kind of matte. And that'll, that'll work out. I'll just sand them all. You know, it's kind of funny. You would think that have, making matte dice, so not shiny, um, would be easier than making shiny dice, but it actually takes a lot more time. Uh, and that's because with the shiny dice, I usually only have to sand one or two sides. Yeah, I, I usually only have to sand one or two sides of the die. Um, and but with matte dice, I have to sand all of the sides, so it takes takes quite a bit more time. But I mean, there, there's pros and cons, I suppose. I don't have to do, you know, polishing takes a lot more steps, I guess, to a certain extent. I guess not really. I probably would do both of them to the third thing, and then the polishing I'll I'll throw into the tumbler. I am trying to see if I can... Okay, so for, for polishing my dice, I sand them and then I have polishing papers. And there's six of them. Um, and you can, you know, the idea is that you can make your dice very, very shiny by the time you get to the sixth one. But, uh, to, first of all, I'm bad at that. I'm, I, I'm not good at getting them nice and shiny with the, the polishing papers. But I, I usually go to the, the third one, I do the first three, and then I throw them into a, a little tumbler with some uh, hardwood cubes, little tiny hardwood cubes, and plastic polish. And to be fair, it makes my dice so much shinier, and it makes them feel so, like, smooth. You love using polish paper? 
I'm so bad at it. My dice always end up looking scratched. That's my that's my biggest like regret with my galaxy dice because those I have to I can't put in the tumbler because um, of the glitter on the outside. It makes it so that it, it the glitter you know is wears off basically. It makes it so it's not holographic anymore. You still have the glitter, but it, it loses the holographicness. Um, so I end up you know just using the polishing papers for those. I'm I don't know. They just never look as good. Never looks as, as shiny as when I put things in the, the into the tumbler. Um, what I was saying though is that I am just trying to see if I can. So I the the most expensive thing with the the tumbler to polish dice is the the wood chips. So the little wooden cubes. Um, they're they're hardwood, and I think for five pounds it was about a hundred bucks. Um, and to be fair, five pounds is about three tumblers worth. Um, but I uh, I took out the I, I you know I used some in the tumbler. I've taken that out now and put in fresh stuff in there because it was you know it was the the. They, the wood had turned so gray. <laughs> it had so much like, you know, just just resin sediment and all the polish had like soaked into everything. And it just wasn't polishing as well as it used to. I think part of it was just all of the sediment from sanding. Cause you know, you, you build up some, some, some resin dust when you sand. It's part of the reason it's good to sand them wet uh, so that you don't end up with, you know, resin dust in the air but uh so i i had i've traded it out and i have you know new wood new wood cubes in there but i am i'm trying to see if i can clean those original wood cubes so i have i was spent part of thursday just sa standing at my kitchen sink with a bowl of like warm soapy water with like a whole bunch of of the wood cubes in it, just like mixing it up and then like pulling the cubes out and then putting clean fresh water and doing it multiple times. And I haven't actually finished. I probably should go. I should spread those out because I think they're in a little bit of a pile at the moment, which is not a good idea. I don't want them to like sit there and rot or anything. But we're we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I can get you know clean clean those a little bit so I can reuse them. Because that would be excellent if I could, because like I said, those those wood chips are expensive. There's so many just little, uh, like, material costs and stuff. Oh man, these are so sticky. Um, I was saying before, I pulled these out maybe a little, a little bit earlier than I normally would. Because I wanted to pull them out before the stream. So we're gonna let those sit for a minute before I before I pull them out of the molds because they're still a little soft. Normally, normally I pull things out at you know 20 hours at the earliest. You know, I let them cure for at least 20 hours in the pressure pot, and it's pretty close to that. It's a little bit before that. I think I put these in about 11:30 last night, and it's you know 7:20 now. So. It's a little, it's a little early. You can, you can tell by the the, the resin that's still in the cup because it's, ooh, that's sticky, which is not what it should be. Why is that sticky? That's not a good sign. That should not be sticky. Hmm. But it is just a little bit, still very. It's still a little sticky. It's still a little sticky. It's very, very pliable. Like, it, it's, yeah, it's really not cured all the way. Like, here's one more thing. You can see it's very, very sticky still. Probably shouldn't have done that. Not great to get that on my hands. Um, I do understand, uh, bosun, what's up? You're free, you're free. 
are you doing, Jen? Uh, what I was saying though, Boston, is I do understand enjoying, like, polishing dice, though. Like, there, there is something, like... It's like how I, I like cleaning house. Like, I have to, like, the hard part for me is figuring out what I need to work on. But once I, like, start cleaning bathrooms or something, I'm just like, this is relaxing. Like, I, I have a project to work on. I have something to do with my hands. I know what I need to do. And, and then also I can, like, see as it's as it's getting done. And there's just, there's something so nice and relaxing and just kind of satisfying about that. Um, but at the same time, I send... You're very anxious and it's repetitive. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. There's, there's something relaxing about having a task and not having to think about it. Like having a sort of like repetitive task. And I do actually enjoy, I was, um, at one point I was talking to Scryer, who is another dice maker here on Twitch. Um, and I think I was talking to, to her. Um, but, you know, she does not enjoy sanding at all. And I was saying I don't enjoy making molds at all. I, I don't know, it's, making molds is tedious for me, and, and sanding things is tedious for her. But, like, I don't mind sanding. I just have to, like, actually do it. But, you know, I can just, I can just sit here and, like, watch some YouTube videos. Uh, I don't know, there's, there's, it's, it's just repetitive and mindless a little bit. I guess to be fair, part of the, I really enjoy making dice because there's kind of a nice mix of repetitive and mindless tasks and then also things where I get to be creative. And I like both of those things, but I don't want to do either one of those things the whole time. Because, like, if I have to be creative the whole time, I, my brain has to be on the whole time. And it just, you know, I'll get worn out. But, like, the but then, you know, the, re the repetitive tasks, I'll get bored eventually. But having them, having this mix is actually pretty nice. I'm just, I'm just kind of realizing that. Um, sorry, I didn't, I didn't read your, your message. Uh, what's up? Uh, you'll be driving home with this on in the background and then pick up your dice. Woo! I was wondering if your dice were going to be to you soon, because I shipped out yours and another person's dice on the same day. And they messaged me to say that they got them. So I was just like, oh, I bet Jen's going to get hers soon, too. I am happy with how this dice turned out. Um, I am actually very happy with how your dice turned out and how that other set of dice turned out that I was talking about. Uh, let me show you. I'm just going to show you pictures on the phone. But the, the other dice set that I shipped was the, the Bumblebee dice, finally. We'll see if it focuses. It never does, but... Mm. <sighs> I could send this to myself. That would just be annoying. Which one? Well, here, I'm going to turn this sideways and try to cover up more of the screen, and then maybe it'll find it a little bit better. Maybe. It never does find things well. Come on, look. Look. Right here. That's not what I want. Eh. That's, that's hard to... So I'll, I'll probably post pictures of this. Maybe I'll post pictures of that on, on all my social media this, uh, this Monday. But Jen's dice turned out pretty as well. Did I get a good picture of those? I might have done that after. Oh no. Uh, oh, I did that afterwards. I see there's I'll show you a couple pictures here I guess. Because Jen's dice. They're very, very, you know, teal. They they look a little bit more blue probably there, but they're you know, teal. There we go. 
teal and then they have blue flowers. And then when you get them warm, they turn like an icy white color, but then the, the flowers stick out so well. So I think they turned out really pretty. They took a little bit because I mean, here I can there's a there's an example of all of them after they get warm. So you can see the you can see the icy white with the, the blue flowers. There's a little bit of some couple of them are turning a little bit teal again. Um but they turned out pretty. But I do like I do like how the bee dice turned out as well. They're just a little bit hard to see. But they're all they're all different and you know one of them has an actual bee on the inside. There's the there's the D20 with the bee on the inside. It has a little bit of like a whitish gold shimmer. I did take a video but I'll see if I can try to focus, but there we go, you can see the bee there. And then it has like a it's so hard on the D20s when you put like a, a good inclusion in there. Like it's hard to hard to see them because there's so many angles and stuff. But anyways, anyways. Things are things were shipped out. I've got I've got a few a few more commissions to work on. I've got these desert dice ones, which I made all of these little cactuses for. And then I'm gonna finish up the the blue and red today. Uh, and then I got let's see, I got those rainbow ones. They're all made. I have the new D6 that's in the tumbler right now. Getting polished. I actually just sanded it right before this, so it's going to take a couple days probably for that to get polished the whole way. I need to make some D6s. So I have, let's see, I have a set of, of copper and purple dice. I'm waiting for some purple glow-in-the-dark powder to come in. So I'll probably work on those on Wednesday. And then I also have a commission for a set of D6s that I might work on on Wednesday as well. Probably work on, on those two. Oof. Am I making molds this week? I um I tend to make molds every other week because it takes, I don't know if I'm just slow. I, I kind of think maybe I'm just slow at making molds, but it takes me like six hours Four, four to six hours for me to make molds from start to finish. I mean, I'm including, you know, both part one and part two in there. But between, like, cleaning off, cleaning all my masters, setting up the forms, um, I, I mean, and I definitely dilly-dally a little bit, but just getting everything set up, and then also, you know, taking things out of all the forms, getting everything set up for, you know, cutting cutting my keys. I feel like it just takes me so long to make molds. But I've, I've kind of gotten that at, at this point, I do molds every other week. Um, so Monday and Tuesday, I'll either make dice on both Monday and Tuesday, or I will make, you know, molds part one on Monday and then molds part two on Tuesday. So I think maybe I was gonna make more dice this week, but. I've been, some of my molds have, I've, some of my molds have had issues, so I've gotten rid of them. But, I think we'll, I think I'm doing dice this week, which is good. I can get some, get some more dice made. Um, oh, if anyone is curious how the, the experiments from last week with dusting the molds with the multi-chrome and all the different colors went. I do have those that I can show. If anyone wasn't here last week and is wondering what I'm talking about, 
uh, I had I had a whole bunch of different pigments that are like two tones so they are one color and then when like light hits them they shimmer in a different color so I have like a, a like a pink to blue um, a white to purple and a blue to green that I was testing out um, and then I was trying them with a multi-chrome that I have which shifts from like purple to orange to green um, and it's a lot more it's a lot darker um, but I was trying out a whole bunch of different things and I think I'll probably sell these as a set because they do match even though they're all different but I was trying some different things where I like dusted the mold with like the blue to green shimmer and also the multi-chrome and stuff and then I think this one was yeah this one's filled with like the white to, to pink um, I think this is one of my favorites it has the multi-chrome dusted on the outside you can see the purple there you can see kind of how it goes to the, the orange there's the, there's the orange and then it's purple and then it has like the blue to green shimmery on the as the, as the resin but yeah they turned out they turned out interesting and they all turned out definitely different but that's how that's how that turned out I think I will I will you know set these up as a set I think those are kind of fun but I do want to I do want to make some more sets for to add to the shop next release all right how is this doing how are these it's probably still they're still rather sticky well Hmm, that doesn't bode well. Did I do my, I hope I didn't do my ratios wrong or something. I do like these colors together. I kind of want to do something now with like this purple, this orange, and this blue. Like that's just kind of pretty. Let's like these and this and this. Um, probably not tonight though, because I want to do the the black um and try it out with this glitter i which i again we'll see how this glitter goes not sure i do also worry it'll be a little heavy but um hmm well since you since you sent these to me both and do you have an idea for a set of dice or i mean if anybody else wants to chime in with an idea i could just do a, a set of black dice but i feel like it might be fun to do like black dice with something else you know maybe you know do half of it with some of this glitter half of it black but maybe with like I don't know like do some gold foil in there or some some like copper gold gold foil and black ooh maybe I'll do maybe I'll dust the inside of the mold with the gold foil and then do the black in there that might be nice I'm gonna, I think maybe try, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dust the inside of the mold with the gold foil so it's kind of on the outside. And then do sort of like, try to do kind of a swirl of the black and some of this glitter. Just to see how this glitter looks. Cause I, I wanna try, I wanna try both of these out. Hmm. And also I have the too much jeans, so I can't just do black gold foil. That's too classy. Well, let's... Oh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll see, we'll see how they turn out. I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely uh, message you once I pull them out and show you how they turn out one way or another. all these colors together. These colors might be good for, uh, so the, um, one of the commission sets that I am thinking I'll probably work on on Wednesday, um, someone ordered a set of D6s that are very similar to, uh, a set of, you know, seven, a seven piece set that I did. Yeah, see, this is just still very, very soft. So I, yeah. Well, 
Let me grab, let me grab my, it's very, very soft uh, landing zone, which is my, my uh, tray mold, because it's flat, so I'm not worried about leaving an indentation in it. But I do want to kind of pull some of these out. Mm, do I want to pull some of these out? Maybe I don't want to pull some of these out. It's still very, very soft. I think I'm gonna let these sit. I'm gonna let these sit. These, these might, uh, that might be an end of stream thing or even an off stream thing, unmolding those because they're very, very soft. So that's just not gonna work out. So we'll just set those over there for now. Um, I should be sad. I am too. I, I, I am, ex yes. All of the culture hustle stuff, I'm like, I want to try all of that. So I'm, I am excited to try those. But, put this away. Um, I did also, uh, I, I posted, you know, a picture of these off, off stream. But I did do some keycaps, I think it was last time, and unfortunately the, the lid shifted so these aren't really usable, but I do think they turned out pretty. Let's see the space, space, the final frontier. Like that, wouldn't that be cute as, oh, let's see if it'll find it. You can kind of get the gist of it, even if it doesn't focus. There we go. Like, wouldn't that be cute as like a space bar? Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be cute to do like actual space bars? I feel like that'd be cute. Um, but I think I want to figure out making my own molds before I before I do sell that and stuff. Because these, the like I said, the lid shifted, so it ended up in the wrong spot. You can see here. It ended up shifted over to this side, so it's just unfortunate. But it'll it'll go in my my box of of misfits over here. A whole a whole container of, of random little things that did not turn out for one reason or another. Okay, well, yes, I want gold for that, and I think maybe a little bit of. This. Did you want just the black and the gold, or should I try using the the glitter as well? Or should I just save that for a, a later date? I might save that for a later date, I don't know. Let me grab my fancy equipment for placing these into the molds. Into it all, why not? Um, so, I showed these earlier, but I don't know who all saw them, Oops. but I have all these little tiny cacti that are made out of polymer clay. Okay, that wants to focus though. There we go, little tiny cacti that I made out of polymer clay. Um, and so we're gonna, we're gonna put these into all of, all of these molds that have some sandy color in the bottom. Uh, I do want to, I think, figure out what I'm going to do in each one and kind of lay it out. Just so I know how many and which ones, so I can get them spread out fairly evenly between the different die dice. Um, I do think the d20 is going to need a, like a saguaro, like a bigger one for sure. And then, I think it's the base there. The base is a pretty good size. We'll do one of these, and maybe like a little grass thing or something. I have some little kind of aloe vera or grass or something like that. Oh, well, that's hard to see. But, you know, I don't know if it's an aloe vera or grass. Some sort of, of desert plant there. Um, I do think that 
The D6 would also be good with a nice, like, saguaro type one. Um, just because the, the D6 is... The D6 is one of the best dice for inclusions because it's like the easiest to see what's inside of it. The D4 is not bad either, but you just have a flat side to see what's inside. And it's, so it's so much easier to see it. Whereas with the D20 you have all of the different facets and so it reflects the light a little bit, kind of makes it hard to see what's on the inside. But um, the D6 would be good with a little, a little cap just like that. Uh, let's see which... Oh, so I think the D4 is going to end up with one of these, these little, these little round guys with the little flowers on top, just because it's a little bit flatter. Actually, it might end up with just that, and maybe, maybe something short too. I'm really happy with. I only have two of these, but I do really like how these turned out. You can kind of see there. Has all the different little, little pieces sticking up. Hmm. I maybe could have painted these so that they had a little bit of, like, some, it was a little bit darker in some of the in between areas, but I don't know. I think they're they're fine this way. But yeah, those are. I like how those turned out. I think those turned out cute. They're the same color as the saguaros though so i think maybe they will i'll put those in ones that don't have the saguaros in them um they're not as tall i was kind of doing the the big cacti the nice tall cactuses in the dice that could fit a nice tall cactus so like the d20 and so maybe the d12 i think maybe those will end up in the d20 d12 and d6 and then I have like a, a little a little short one that just has one little arm that'll that'll end up so just has one little arm that I think will end up maybe in one of these other ones maybe one of the D10s it'll do this one kind of break it up a little bit so if you have them in order it's they're not all you know right next to each other Oof. all right so I think the D20 could definitely take a third thing uh, here, let me let me split up some of these, some of these sh short little guys. One there. I think put one in the D6 because again, I think those it'd be nice to be able to see those. We've got one in the D4. Be one in the D8. Um, gotta figure out where I want to put these. Oops, I didn't even pick that up just a moment. I'm trying to be gentle with these because they're, they're very small and fragile. Oh, I feel like these turned out pretty good. Uh, it's hard working at like this size, but these luckily are not like so detailed that it'll cause me problems. You know, it's just a bunch of little, bunch of little tiny ovals that I stuck together. Make a little, make a little cactus. Uh, Mary Munz. Oh, hello! Glad you could make it. Put that with the D8. Although then I have two with the thing. Hmm. Well, we'll do we'll do grass with one, and then maybe one of these guys with another. I did. I have some little some little just li little guys that'll kind of fill in the space a little bit. Uh, and then I, I only have two of these with the bright pink flowers on top. This one's a little bit better than the other one, I think, but... Let's see if I can... It, that one's maybe not as exciting. I don't know. But I feel like it's just nice to have the variation. But yes, I'm, I'm glad that you could come hang out while, we, while I work on these. See uh, what's going on. Mm, that's not going to fit on the D... So that might maybe I'll put that one here. It might be a little bit too similar in height. I want a variation, a little bit of variation. So maybe, maybe that one will go with the D10. Um, I don't like this one. It's the same sort of thing. I don't like this one necessarily as much, but I think that I need to use both, just so that the single one, so it doesn't look out of place. So there isn't just one. 
one's just a little bit shorter. The, the pink flower blends in a little bit more. Actually, wait, this one's a little bit shorter. Would it fit with the... Mm, I don't think I'm going to do it with the B. Well, this one's a little bit shorter. We could do that one here, maybe. Or I could do this one with the D12, maybe? Maybe the D12. And then we have kind of our little our little grass and, and filler-in plants. And I actually like these. I think these are going to just be nice little additions. Let me... I'll put these all here so you can see them. Just to kind of add a little bit of a different color. A little bit of a different texture. That's something I really like in like gardens and stuff is I love I love plants that have like different colors and textures. Um, even if they're all green, I love having the just the variation in in all the shapes. I feel like it makes things look more full if you have you know a lot of you know lots of different colors, lots of different you know sizes of things. You have some things that have big leaves, some things that have small leaves. Just that, I don't know, there's something really pleasant about that variation. <laughs> you're home, you're making cheeseburger sliders soon, and you have your package. Woo! I hope you I hope you like your dice. I I I like how those dice turned out, so I'm excited for that. Let's see here. Maybe here. This one definitely needs another thing. Uh, I definitely want you're also making a new D&D character. Do you have a new game that you're going to be playing in, or just for fun? <laughs> Inspiration has struck. You need a D&D character whose spouse is the moon. You know, I think I want grass here, because both of these are very dark colors. So I want some of that lighter color in there. And we'll do the slightly larger one. I think that'll be nice. Uh, a new game! Usually one, uh, run one-shots. Oh, okay, cool! That'll be fun! Yeah, uh, I'm trying to kind of put the light-colored grass in the ones that don't have, like, the super light-colored cacti. Because I have, you know, the little short squat cacti with the flowers on top, and they're fairly light-colored. Um, let's see, it's Western-inspired, includes moon marriage and a wife. That'll be fun. We've got got it all all figured out. But yeah, cause they're they're different colors. I mean, I'll show you. They're different colors, but they're both fairly light colored. It actually almost looks more different there than it does in person. So I think I just I want to put this with some darker colored things. But to, I have a whole bunch of those little circular ones. I might end up putting that with the D6, even though there's one of those lighter colored ones, just because we have the big, the big tall cactus. <laughs> the bubble wrap shaped like hearts. I, um, I'm just doing that for February. What with the uh, Valentine's Day and everything. My dad, I think, saw that uh, online and 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 thought of me for for packaging <laughs> and so I, that was one of the things I got for Christmas was was heart-shaped bubble wrap uh, and I'm just like this doesn't really fit my my shop aesthetic at all but it's fun for the month of, of February I fit yeah I'll, I'll, I still have a bit of it left it's probably gonna stay up on my shelf until next February Alright, so I think this one will be good with one of our little, our little, not really the grassy ones, but the kind of, I don't know what to call these, lumpy ones? They're not really lumpy. I don't know, I don't think all of these need three. I think, I think we want a little bit of variation here, so think on this. 
some of these, you know, it might be good to have some of these with just two. The D4 is just going to have one, I think. So I think that'll be, it'll be nice to have the D4 with just the one, the one cactus. The D4 is small. Uh, you know, D6, D20, I think those should definitely have three. Just because the D6, the D6 is going to show the inside the best, and the D20 is kind of a, a focal point to a certain extent when it comes to dice. But the other ones, it might be nice to have a little bit of a mix. Um, hmm. So how do I want to... I think I might change out something with this D10, D00. Everything there is kind of short, which is okay. But I don't want to just repeat kind of what I have with the D8 because I have kind of some of the same, some of the same cacti. Sorry, there's cat hair here, which is always what happens. I might, I might put. Do I want to put the larger one in the D20? I want to put the larger one of this. These this clusters in the d20 that'll be nice and let's see here i think i think the d6 is nice with those three has the like the grass i think the d12 might be I just don't like this one as much. I might not use that one. To be fair, having the D12 with just the tall one and one of the grass things might be kind of nice. But I have one of the tall ones in the grass with over here. But I have one of the tall ones with one of the, the lumpies. I don't know what to call these. Uh, in the D20. Maybe I will use this one. Maybe I will use that one. I think that'll, yeah, we're going to use that one. I do want to use more, I want to use more of these lumpy ones. I might trade out one of the, hmm. Well, I could trade out that for maybe one of the lumpy ones in the D12. Let me, let me see how those look. Stretch. All right, I guess it's time to stretch. Oof. Let's see, what have I gotten done today? I feel like I haven't done much. Did some inking. I don't know. I stayed up way too late last night, so I slept in. Mm, work on some taxes stuff. There's all these taxes stuff to do. We got like a foot of snow yesterday, so that's been, haven't really gone out in it much except to go, you know, put things in the mailbox to ship, but it's, it's beautiful out there and I don't have any desire to go out in it. <laughs> it's been like 25 degrees, like yesterday and today, and it, like we have like a foot of snow. Which is either a lot or a little of snow, depending on where you live, but... Yeah, I, I live somewhere that ha definitely has seasons. Because uh, in the summer it gets up to about... And I'm going to do this in Fahrenheit. I really should... I should figure out something that can, that's like a... I don't know. I should, I should figure out how Celsius works. But, um... No, it gets up to probably at the hottest, like 110 in the summer. It maybe gets up to 110 for like a week. You, but it'll it'll be in the hundreds in the summer, and then in the winter it'll get down into the 20s and we'll get some snow. Um, again, Fahrenheit, not not Celsius, but uh, we've got bigger problems if it reaches 100 Celsius. Kelvin, tell us the temperature in Kelvin. I actually could tell you it in Kelvin if I knew Celsius. 
because it's Kelvin is just Celsius plus like 275 or something like that. Is it 275? 273? I'll tell you in a moment. Celsius to Kelvin. 273. No, 274.1. 1 Celsius equals 274.15. So it is it is Celsius plus 273. I'm surprised that I remembered that. You come into my house. Think I don't know Kelvin. I am surprised that I remembered it was 273 though. But you do have to keep in mind that my bachelor my I have a my bachelor's degree is a general science degree. <laughs> Hmm, some of these, so this D10 and this D8, they're just a little bit shorter. I think I like, but I, I think I, I want the mix. I want the mix of some of them having a little bit more, some of them having a little bit less. But I don't want, like, all of them to be the same height, so that you don't have any of that variation of, of size. Because that's part of what kind of makes things look nice, is a little bit of variation. These dice smell like cumin. <laughs> One of the, so, like I said, I did a kind of a sandy yellowish color in the dice. Um, and then I added a little bit of kind of like a, a little bit of a brown there. Oh, it's kind of hard to see this. I'm just gonna find it. You, know, you can see those little speckles of brown, just to be kind of like some some desert plants and stuff. You know, a little bit a little bit of difference in in c color. Uh, yeah, that's cumin. Like I was like I was saying before, uh, with my with my color chips of of you know all the different colors that I have. Not everything in here is, you know, yeah. I, here's allspice. I have all sorts of things. There's activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is great as a coloring. Um, I do really love uh, chili pepper as a color. It looks very dark there, but it's sort of like a really dark red. There we go. You can kind of see there. That looks great with gold foil, by the way. Like a good a chili pepper and gold foil looks great. Hmm. I think I might. <laughs> You're so. You like them, I take it. <laughs> I'm glad you like your dice. I'm I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. The other thing, though, is that usually I do a bonus d4 and a bonus and a bonus keychain with my custom dice. And I didn't really take that I didn't take that into account when I poured these the other day. I don't know that I have enough cacti for for that. I mean the the bonus the bonus things, they don't necessarily end up, like, matching. It's just, like, if I have leftover resin. So that that might end up just being what happens. If we, if we have leftover resin, that's going to happen. And I have a couple little cacti left, so those might end up in, like, keychain or something. But we'll see how that goes. I do have things set off to the side for that. But let us let me glue these into place. Because I think, I think this is going to be kind of our, our final final sets for each one. Three in most in most of them, the D8 and one of the D10s just have two, and then the D4 just has one. Just to have kind of a little bit of a little bit of variation. So I, I have my very fancy way of, of attaching these. And that is I have Elmer's glue. And we're just going to dab the end of it with a little bit of Elmer's glue. And then hold it into place while it, while it, while it ad adheres. So let me take this. 
it doesn't usually take much to kind of get it in place a little bit. And there is a little bit of a flaw on one of the giveaway dice. Don't tell Jen. Uh, there's a little bit of a flaw on one of the giveaway dice, just so you know, but those ones, you know, you got what we made on stream. Let's see if I can show you what I'm doing on one of the ones where it's a little bit easier to see. I want these to stay upright, though. You know, I don't want them to fall over once we start pouring the resin in there. I don't need that much. I just need, I just need enough to kind of stick them down. The polymer clay is a little bit heavier than, you know, do I even want this one in here? I don't know if I even want this one in here. It's kind of cute with just the two. Mm, I think I do. I think I do. Let's just put that over here a little bit. The polymer clay is just slightly heavier than the resin. Uh-oh. My things are a little bit sticky. But no, the, yeah, the polymer clay is just a little bit heavier than the resin, so it's not going to float uh, once we put the resin in. But I don't want them to get, like, knocked over and stuff. Yeah, I think that'll be good. So I'll try not to jostle that too much. Another, another tall boy going in. One of the little little grassy things. I don't know if it's like I said. I don't know if it's if it's like a grass or if it's more like um, an aloe vera. I was thinking aloe vera when I made them, but you know they have kind of a similar kind of pointed look to them to a certain extent. I want you off to the side. So part of the reason that I just use Elmer's glue is that. It works. Um, <laughs> it, it it dries clear, and it dries quickly enough that I can I can use it for this sort of stuff. And it's just it's it doesn't you know dry so fast that I can't slightly move things if I need to. All right, there's those in there. Moving on to the the D zero zero the D ten. First one. Here's, here's our, this one's kind of a shimmery green, which is kind of fun. My, my glue is starting to dry a little bit. Okay. I, I'm trying to like spread them out a little bit in here just so it looks like they're not all grouped together on all you know I want them I want variation in these I want it to look kind of natural that is the goal so I'm looking for a kind of natural look obviously these are a little cartoony just because they're all they're so small and they're all one color and all that but but I do want them to look you know like, they weren't placed too purposefully. And in that doing that, I'm placing them very purposefully in here. This one might actually end up a little bit closer, though, because I think I'm going to lean it up against this so that it stays. Mm, I don't like that placement, though. <sighs> These ones are difficult. I think I didn't make the base flat enough on- not upside down! I didn't make the base flat enough on this one. Which is just unfortunate. Alright, I guess it's gonna end up leaning against the thing. Yeah, it's just going to end up leaning against it a little bit. 
So I think I might move over the other taller one that's in here then. A little bit more glue on there. We're just gonna move it over a little bit. I want it so it's not, you know, equidistant. Yeah, these are, like I said, I'm trying to make them, them look random by placing them very, very strategically. <laughs> There's a certain amount of, when things are random, they don't always look as random as when you when you do things purposefully in art. There's that. Do I want this next to that one or do I want to spread it out? I might spread it out a little bit. And I'll, yeah, I think on the, here, let me do the, yeah, we'll spread that out a little bit. We'll put this over by itself. I think that'll be, that'll be good. Make things a little bit different here. I'm going to play, I'm going to place the one in the D4 and the one in the D6. So we can, you, I can show you guys what I'm doing. So I'm just putting a little bit of glue. My glue has dried. My glue has dried. That didn't work out well. I think I just... Get a little bit, a little bit more glue. So we can keep going here. All right. Ah! Let me not toss the glue. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to toss it. Yeah, the D4 is just going to have the one, but I think that'll be kind of cute. Because the D4 is just kind of small. We're just kind of gluing things in place. It's gonna be, there's a little, little cacti, a little short round cacti with a little flower on top. There we, oh gosh, I moved it right as it found focus. And it's thinking about it. There we go. Uh, it never wants to find focus, but just has the one little cacti in there. Let's do the D6. I think that'll be a little bit easier for you guys to see as well. So I'm just putting a little bit on the very bottom there. And then I am holding those in holding it in place. And the glue actually does a pretty good job of holding it upright. As long as the, the bottom is a little bit flat, just that it has a, something to rest on. And got a little bit of grass, oops, the grassy aloe vera one for here. My, I guess to be fair, my, my normal placement seems to be normally putting like two together and then one kind of off to the side. Just kind of spreading them out. I probably should have done the grass, but I did that kind of over there. So we're, we're mixing it up a little bit. thinking about it I don't usually like I do but I don't necessarily talk about what my current interests are on here I guess they change fairly rapidly though I do to a certain extent because I can't you know I can't shut up I can try but I can't 
This one just has, I have a couple in there. I'll just put those in the middle together. Yeah, some of them have some more, some of them have some less. I think that's a good, good mix. Let me just make sure everything is still upright. Yeah, it looks like it's those, it's those big cactuses that I'm the most worried about. Everything else has a pretty good base on it. I think, so this may be falling over a little bit. Let me push that up a little bit. I think everything is standing upright. Um, we want to make sure that, I want to make sure that these dry completely before I pour the resin in. Um, because if I don't let them dry all the way, you can see the glue. I need to let the glue, you know, turn clear before I put the resin in. Otherwise, it, it just stays white and it doesn't look good. I think I can put the glue away. I think that's everything. What did I put that? Huh. Sorry, I was just, I, I was thinking, but I pulled out a keychain for a different, oh, it's right here. I pulled out a keychain for a different commission earlier. And I want to get that done because I have everything else done for that one. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. This one might just end up with a random D4 and I'll figure out a keychain. I have an idea for the keychain if I don't uh, do it tonight. I might use some of the like leftover, try to pop some of the leftover resin and mix it with some stuff. Okay. So those are ready to go as soon as the glue dries. Um, here is the one with the, the knights. Um, as I mentioned before, I tried to do this already, and the knights were just hard to see, and they ended up sinking a little bit more than I would have liked. Oh, there you can kind of see it now. Like, they're a little bit, they're a little bit hard to see, and they're a little bit, you know, further down than I would have liked. I would have liked them to be a little bit more evenly spaced out in here. So I, I made some more knights, baked those up yesterday, and... Um, you know, touched them up with some paint today. We're gonna we're gonna try this again. Let me grab. I am gonna do this kind of the same way I did last time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit of UV resin to kind of make a little bit of a structure for these guys, and then we can we can place them in the mold. So let me grab my, grab all my stuff. Where's the, oh no, there we go. Here's my, my little UV, UV light that I use for curing, yeah, curing UV resin. I, it's just like, it's just like a cheap little one for like curing nail polish. Oh, my nails are all gross. Eh. Uh, one for like, carrying like UV nail polish that I got I think on Amazon but it works it works for what I need it to work for um let me I have my d6 here and I have kind of an idea now I think I want these to be a little bit further apart almost oh I don't know if I want that one this one right here this this that one's a little bit chunky a little bit short actually. Maybe I'll go with these. I think these two are a little bit taller. But I'm gonna go with the other two. I made I made a couple just in case. I think I'm gonna go with these ones. I think these ones are a better size. I think that's about where I want them too. The problem is it's just very close. So let what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little a little bar of resin here. And get it to come out. Yep. Alright. And then we're just going to cure that and then we'll cut it down to come to the right size and we'll attach these together. Because um, I want these to be in a certain arrangement relative to each other, so I'm just going to attach them together in that arrangement so that they stay that way. 
it's kind of like what I'm, what I'm doing with the cactuses a little bit in that I am, I'm placing them where I want them before I put the resin in. Because it's just easier that way. Yeah, I, if I if I tried to put the resin in and then put like the cactuses in, they wouldn't they wouldn't stay where I wanted them to stay. So we're gonna put things together first. Uh, how are things? Are they still super stu super sticky? That's on the outside. Hmm, might be a little, getting a little bit closer. So I have a whole bunch of things in molds that I haven't pulled out yet. Because I put them in last night and it hasn't quite been as long as it usually is. But I think it is starting to get a little bit closer. Yeah. I think we're, I think we could do this now, okay. Hmm, I might have gotten my ratio a little bit wrong on my resin, which is unfortunate. I think I might have added a little bit too much of the hardener, which is okay, but not great. Let's see how this turned out. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, cheeseburger slider hours. Mmm, yummy. No worries, I can obviously ramble to myself for <laughs> a long period of time. Alright, here was my solution for the dye that... Uh, should I get the snake skin to work in? I finally just painted the snake skin gold. And I'm going to send a picture to the person and see what they think. But it's definitely easier to see the snake skin now. I do think that you can still see kind of the snake skin texture which was important to me um it maybe ended up a little bit crowded in there I maybe should have done a slightly smaller piece but i'm gonna i'm gonna you know reach out to the person that it's for and get their opinion report if i need to all right let's see here i think these are about where i want them but i think i'm actually gonna do move them apart a little bit more I think they'll probably, they might end up, yeah, we're gonna, yeah, I think that's gonna be about where we want them. Just grab my little, my little scissors here. And hamburger sounds good, actually. I think, I, I think I had some leftover Chinese food for dinner. Probably should have eaten more before streaming, to be honest. I'm very bad at remembering to, uh, to eat. Which is part of the reason that it's good that my brother and I live together, because he's an excellent cook. I have no patience for cooking whatsoever, but he is excellent at it, so I am... I get all of the good food from him, which works out well for me. I pay the mortgage, he buys all the food. We both feel like we're mooching, so it's fine. As long as we both feel like we're mooching, it works out. Alright, and then we'll we'll attach those together. And I do have the D6 here so that we can we can try and make sure that things line up correctly. Ooh. Mm. I can't remember if I started talking about this or if I uh, was just thinking about it, but uh yeah, my my interest change so rapidly and I get like obsessed with like one thing at a time apparently it's an ADHD thing but um yeah so but I don't know I, I'll talk about dice I'll talk about D&D &D stuff here but I don't usually I don't usually bring up my like current obsessions I guess but I don't usually do that to most people I don't want that to come out. I'm trying to just cut down. Uh, ah, I was here. I'll do that down where you can see it in just a moment. I just wanted to attach these first and see how they fit in here. Oh, that might be perfect, actually. Let me just slide this out a little bit. The corner. 
I think that's going to be perfect actually. I think that holds those exactly where I want them. Because it, I wanted it, you know, a little bit closer to the top, and it's definitely right there against the top. Let me just make sure the lid sits comfortable. <coughs> comfortably. There we go. I can talk. I don't, because I don't want it to cause like an issue with the numbering or anything. I think that's, I think that's good. Um, let me think about this though. So, uh, this whole set of dice is like half blue with gold foil and then half like clear with like red streaks through it. How do I want to arrange this? Do I want the gold one to be in like the blue with the gold and then the blue part to be with the red streaks or do I want it to be kind of mixed? I think maybe I want the gold one to be with the blue and gold and I want the red streaks to be on top, so we're we'll put the gold one down because I want that to why does it not work this direction? Okay, just a second. I don't know why it fits the other direction, it doesn't want to fit this direction. Well, I might put it back the way we had it because I can get it to sit how I want it. My, my only concern is that the dark blue is going to blend in with the blue. How am I going to sit that this way, but not the other direction? Let me think about this just a moment. Have that kind of shoved into the corner a little bit. at a little bit of an angle. It's hard to grab. Okay, there we go. I think I think that's how I had it. Okay, I think I'll do it like this then. So I'm gonna do it where the, the gold one is on the bottom and then the blue one is on the top. And then I'm gonna be doing dark blue with gold on the bottom and then the red with the clear on top. And I think that will make be a little bit more distinct as well. So we're, we're going to do that. And I think those are pretty much where I want them. So I think we're done with this. I don't think I need UV resin for anything else. Uh, and the reason that I didn't use UV resin to hold the cacti in place um, is because you need to have, be able to get the light in there. And that would have been difficult with my uh, opaque molds and also the opaque um, cacti, you know, it'd be, it'd be hard for the, the light to get in there and actually cure the, cure the resin. So let me just put this away. All right. What do we have left? So, got our cacti all set up. That stuff to figure out. Um, I wanted. I want to remake these two dice. Um, I think I mentioned it. Oopsies. No, that's okay. I guess I accidentally got silver sharpened in that. But um, I think I mentioned this earlier. That this one, everything kind of floated, and this one is just messed up. It has like a chunk of a different color resin, and one of the sides is the mold had an issue. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna remake those. Um, and these are part of a uh, set of terrarium dice. And so let me pull down my plants. Let me, let me set these kind of out of the way a little bit. Just so that I don't run into them. I don't want to, I don't want to break any of the, I, I mean, they're, obviously they're protected, but I don't want to like run into them and hurt any of the uh, cacti in there. Move things back because I need to pull something down here. I have my box of plants that I have dried, as well as some other uh, fun little things in here. There is, you know, I have this. This section here has all bugs 
full dead bugs. <laughs> Which I can hopefully show you in a minute. We're gonna open this up. Speak this back a little bit. All right. Um, so for these dice, you know, I have some moss. I have some kind of that I use for stuff. But I also want to have some like little tiny flowers, some leaves. Um, I'm, I have this section right here, which is just kind of random little pieces from th the various things. So this is actually perfect. So I'm going to grab, again, things of some varying textures and throw that out here. Here's a flower. That might be nice. Um, and then for the, you know, I, I, that's going to be plenty. I probably won't use all these. I like I like this. Oh, actually, wait, I have two dice here. Um, let me think about this. For the... Where did I put the... Oh, here they are. For the D6, I kind of want to put a bug in there. Uh, just because that's... I, I, I did a bug in... I made two sets, and I put a little beetle in the other one. I have some roly-polies in here, which might be good. I also have a fly... Let's maybe try a roly poly. Little little pill bug. So I'll show you here. I have. Come on. I have a little, just a little dead pill bug, and all all of these these bugs I found like dead on the sidewalk, or my cat brought me. <laughs> but mostly I found dead on the sidewalk. So there's some moths. There's some grasshoppers in here. There's some. I have a, a mostly full uh, dragonfly in here. I have another dragonfly that's in pieces because at one point my cat hopped up and knocked down all of my plants. That was fun. Oh, I could do a wasp. I have wasps. That is actually, this is contra contraband cat bugs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My, my wildlife menace. Um... I start speaking of the the one actually the one exclusion to that rule is I do have some wasps here that I killed uh, and that was before I really understood how important wasps are environmentally so but I've, I've kept them there they I and what I was going to say is I actually have a die that I plan to have in my shop next restock we Grab it. It's a little cloudy at the moment because it's in the middle of being polished, but and it literally just it's literally just a D twenty with a wasp in it. It was uh, I did this as a sort of oh let's see if we can find it. There we go. It's literally just a D twenty with a wasp in it. I don't think I'm even going to ink it, just, you know, just so you can see the wasp all nice. But that's going to hopefully be available next uh, next restock. I think it's fun. Oops. 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 But I'll do a pill bug there. And then let me just take a look here. Yeah, this D10 is a mess. This D6 is honestly not bad. It's just that everything floated, which was kind of kind of annoying. But let me find something else for the for the D6 here. There's some like sort of flowery leaf type things. You know. So maybe maybe grab a little piece of like grass. And like I said before, I just want I want a variation on like some like colors and textures sort of thing. I want it to look a little bit a little bit overgrown, a little wild. Ooh, here we go. That'll be a good piece. It's like a little flower piece. Here's like a little a little leaf. Uh, and then we'll like I said, we'll also have some some moss and stuff in there too. So I think that will probably be plenty. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be plenty for this. For a second, there's some fluff on this. Actually, let me... I'll probably 
probably end up that I'll probably end up not using all of that in the D10, but that's okay. All right, let me put my contraband cat bugs back away. How did the keycap turn out? Oh, hello! I'll show you. I I did post a picture on social media, but let me grab these so I can show you. They are unfortunately unusable and I'll show you why in just a second but they look great so here's here's how they turned out go find them maybe let me let me grab a background for these we'll use we'll use my oops my planner it's a little, it's a little pink but that is that's fine hopefully it'll I like a good bright color Hopefully you'll be able to see them though, if it has a background. Maybe. I wish it, oops, I wish it would focus. <laughs> um, the problem is that the, the lid on those molds, it shifted while it was curing and so they didn't end up centered, which is just very unfortunate. <laughs> So these are just going to my, my random unusable pieces box, which isn't necessarily things that, you know, didn't turn out pretty or whatever, but I really, I do really like, there we go. I do really like this one. It has a little bit more pink in it in real life, I think, but I do like how these turn out. And now I want to do a whole, like, space bar. Um, <laughs> I just need to figure out, I'm, I'm going to let you guys in on something. I'm debating whether I want to order more masters for things or if I want to invest in like a resin printer so I can start making my own STL files and just printing out my own masters and it really just comes down to like price and convenience and all that fun stuff but because you know I've been thinking about getting like some some masters made for like a chunky D20 and a D6, maybe a D2 with my logo on it. Uh, and then I was, you know, thinking about trying to make custom keycaps, which would be nice to have, you know, some sort of, of piece that I could use to make molds. Um, and, it, you know, it'd be very useful if I could, if I could design them and then 3D print them. But I'm, I'm, I'm going to do some of that research this week. Tuesday is my normal admin day. It's when I do all my scheduling and order things and all that fun stuff. So I'm, I'm going to do some, some research on Tuesday. I don't even know what kind of printer necessarily I'd need. I know that I'd need one of the like resin printers, not a filament printer. Um, but I need to like I said, I need to I need to do some research and see whether whether that would even be the best option for me or not. Whether because there's a certain amount of convenience to just ordering ordering pre-made masters. Not necessarily well, not pre-made necessarily, you know, they're custom, but but having someone else make the, the files and do all the printing. And the the place that I uh, have gotten my masters through, they do they remove the like support structure and everything too. Which is very useful <laughs> means I don't have to so I, I, I don't know I'm, I'm still thinking on it but where I was going with that was if I did get a resin printer like that I could make my own keycap uh, designs to then make molds of you know it'd be be e easier for me to do. I need to figure out what 3D modeling software I need to use, but I, like, guys, I, I've taken a whole year of CAD, so computer assisted design, like, um, what did I use? What was the, it started with an S, I think. My brain is supplying me with Streamlabs, but no, that's what I used to stream. Uh... The, the point is, though, that I know how to do 3D modeling. I know how, how 3D modeling works. So, like, as long as I had figured out, you know, what software I wanted to use and everything, 
I could absolutely make my own files. The um, the dice might not be as easy, but I'd, I'd figure that out. All right, let me let me get these set up. And also, like some people have already made dice files, at which point I could probably still like and made them open to like other people to use. I could take that and then um, modify them, which would be easy enough to do. Um, so here's my my dirt, quote unquote, um, and this is actually coffee grounds. And the other thing that that could be useful for is I could use that to make inclusions. So I've seen people do like, they've 3D printed, they've with their like resin printer, like flowers and stuff that they've then put into dice. Uh, and I mean, that could be cool for, for keycaps as well. Cause I think, I, I like how those keycaps turned out and I now I want to make more. Um, there's all sorts of, it all stuck to the sides. Let me just try and push some of this down. I do think I do think it'd be fun to start doing some keycaps. I do need to figure out how they work a little bit more. Which, uh, to be fair, I'm I'm at the point that point where I'm just like I don't know how they work, so I don't know if I should start on it. But like, that's how I was when I started making dice too. Why is it so staticky? All the stuff is sticking to the sides. Stop it. That's so frustrating. It's like sticking to my my little popsicle stick here whenever I try to move things. So What is uh what has everybody else been up to? Any art projects? Any good like movies, TV shows, or I don't know YouTube series? I've been watching lots of YouTube videos. Um, I do kind of want to watch Wandavision. I saw that looks very interesting to me. It looks very like kind of meta, but also kind of it seems kind of like horror almost from what I've seen. I haven't watched any of it, but it looks really interesting. I like stuff like that. You're being chaotic. Are you licking soap? Uh, is that how you're being chaotic? Or is there something else going on? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Having having your nightly soap treat. Understandable. <laughs> some moss in here. No, never. Yeah, no. Uh, that must seem like such a strange thing for me to say uh, to anyone who is new or is not here often. Because it is a running joke that Bosun eats soap. But also anyone who's new is not going to realize that. They think I'm just accusing a random person in the chat of eating soap, probably. <laughs> I kind of wish Beta was here, just because um, uh, I've gotten really into Hermitcraft lately, and I know that they know what that is. <laughs> Which it's a, it is a, a YouTube series, but um, and there's just there's stuff that happened, and I'm just like I want to talk about this, but no one would have any clue. <laughs> well, if you're gonna be like that, Bosun, how dare you? Come into my chat. You accuse me of accusing you. <laughs> I am amused though that my my name is now Liz Zaster. Like that does just really amuse me for some reason. 
I was, uh, I was thinking about this, because I, like I said, I've been watching lots of YouTube videos and stuff, and, like, a lot of YouTubers have names, <laughs> have names that don't relate to their actual name at all. First of all, I'm like, how did you come up with these names? I, 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 have, I have no idea how you guys came up with these names, but, uh... I'm, I'm realizing that like a lot of a lot of like streamers and YouTubers and stuff have names that are not their actual names. I'm just like, have I made a mistake? <laughs> Since my name is actually Liz. But also, how did people come up with these random names? How did people come up with their handles for things? I guess to be fair, there's things like I don't know. My brother doesn't really have social media, but like, uh, you know, he has certain, uh, like, game handles and stuff that don't include his name at all. But also some of the ones, though, where it's like, this could be an actual name, almost, or, you know, it's like, how did they come up with this? But really, though, it's just like, hmm, why did I go with my actual name? My last name is not Zaster by any stretch of the imagination. This is all a play on human disaster, but... Put that beetle in there. I'm probably going to have to keep pushing this down. I expect, anyways. Um, let's put this little piece maybe over here. Little tiny flower. Yeah, we've got that D6, I think, ready to go. A little bit of extra foliage here. We're just gonna, I'm just going to throw that in here for now. I just want, I just want to finish out these sets since, since these two didn't, didn't really turn out. I don't know if I'll even put this one in with the, uh, you know, miscellaneous dice. Because here I'll show you. I'll show you what's going on here. Um, one, it has a chunk of like a different kind of resin. Oops. If you look at that forty, there's like. Sorry, it's not mirrored. There we go. If you look at the forty, there you can see. Yeah, you can see the the problem that it has with the face there. But also right right inside that four, you can kind of see there's like a blue pink chunk of resin. So yeah, I finally figured out which mold it was that had this issue, and it's in my two cut up box. But I don't think I think this is probably gonna go in the in my box of of unusable, not necessarily unusable, but ones that I'm not going to sell as is. So this is all. So ones where, you know, if, if I sanded it down, it'd be missing a face, or, you know, it had has a corner that has a big gap in it. That's hard to see with the black. Uh, it has a big big bubble in it. Some, some of them have some, some bubbles. Actually, this one might be useful. Mm, it's a little soft. Yeah, that one's that one's not usable, but some of these could still be used as uh, jewelry, maybe. And this one, the face, this this face just got is uneven and stuff. So th yeah, this stuff, this of it may end up as jewelry or something, but not really useful. Th this D6 though, it'll go into the the miscellaneous raw dice box. But it's usable. It's just not quite how I wanted it to be. So that'll end up in here. And this looks like there's fewer things in it than there used to be, I think. But that's because I have four already put together sets of raw dice upstairs in my office. Um, just arranged by color. Just so, you know. I did sell a set of, of the raw dice already. And they, didn't, they didn't have... They didn't mark down a preference, so they got blue, because that's 
I have a lot of blue. Most of most of my my dice end up being like blues and purples. I like those colors. They're pretty. Oh. I would continue our faux argument, Bosun, but I am not awake enough. I stayed up far too late last night. I stayed up until like 6 this morning and then got up at, at noon. <laughs> and it's just all, it's, it's, that's all on me. I just didn't go to sleep. But like, oh man, I am not, my brain is not functioning at, at full capacity. All right, that's, I think that's pretty good. Oh, oh here, I found a piece of, of leaf here. We'll add this as well. Mm, no, maybe not. I don't think we will. Okay, we've got those set up. This can go back away. All righty. And then what can I do? We're going to try something with these two new things that Bosun sent me. And I'm thinking I'm also going to we're going to use some gold foil and I'm also going to use a little bit of ah, of a a shimmer, kind of just kind of a white shimmer. Um because the plan is I'm going to um kind of dust the mold with this gold foil. And it's not really dusting it. I'm just going to kind of stick it to the outsides of the mold. And then uh we go. Uh, stick to the outsides of the mold and then I think I'm gonna swirl like some black resin and then I'm gonna do some clear resin with some of this in it and some of this in it and I don't know and I've said this before I don't know what this is gonna do because it's it's fairly heavy <laughs> so d20 six four oh my god all my different dice I have random little pieces of resin everywhere. My workspace is such a mess. So let's go through and add the gold foil to all of these. <sighs> Wait. Wait, I just realized, Bosun, you never actually told me what, what, what you meant by you were being chaotic. I just realized that. You never, like, or was that just the end of the story? <laughs> I just realized that there, you never actually elaborated on that. I think I do want the brush, though. I think that's going to make things a little bit easier to flatten this out in here. I'm just going to try and do a little bit on the sides, on the inside. I'll see if I can get it so you can see in just a minute. Chaotic. Eh, you know, chaotic. As long as you're being chaotic good and not chaotic evil, it's fine. I'll even let, you know, I'll even give you chaotic neutral on weekends. So I'm just... I was holding that up so you couldn't even see it. Uh, and I'm just taking some of this gold. And just kind of your a bean. A bean. I like beans. Mmm, baked beans sounds good. So I'm just kind of trying to get this gold to stick to the sides in here I'll do a little bit to the lid there. Alright, that should be 
plenty of gold. I put a lot, quite a bit of gold in there. It's a little hard to see. There's a little bit more in some places than others. I'll show you on probably the D6. Again, it's just easier to see on the on the D6. We set these off to the side. Come over here with this. Alright, time for the D12. No, let's see. What have, what have I been up to? Uh, let's see. I mentioned earlier we got like a foot of snow yesterday. That's that's kind of exciting. I haven't really gone out in it much, but it just it looks so nice. But it's been cold. It's been very cold out. My my cat is mad because he can't go outside. Well, I mean he could, I suppose, but he 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 hates the cold. He hates the cold. He hates the wind. Yeah, he, he loves going outside, but he's always so sad when it's windy or cold, because he does not like either of those things. Ah. Ah. Um, no, I just love how the snow looks. It makes everything just kind of all, like clean because everything's just kind of the same color it's it makes everything so bright my my brother um and he he told me this before i think it snowed a little bit earlier in the season just a little bit we were talking about it but he's talking about how snow is nice for horror games <laughs> Because you can have it be dark out, but still have it be, you know, light enough. Because, you know, it's it's brighter when there's snow out there. Because all the, the light's reflecting off of it. So you can have things be kind of, kind of... You have that, have that kind of moody ambiance. Um, and then, but also, like, it muffles sound. But also, you know, you can have s some extra sound. It's, it's like... Um, I, you know, I, I realized this because of, of something I was reading about, um, you know, horror and what makes things scary. And it seems like most horror is accomplished by making it seem like something is there when there shouldn't be anything there, or making it seem like there's nothing there when there should be something there. And snow is really good for that because it makes everything very quiet. You know, it's, it's hard, to, hard to hear if there's something there. But at the same time, you know, you have the crunching of the snow, so if something's walking, you, you hear something when you wouldn't necessarily hear it otherwise. And it kind of does that with vision a little bit too, because, you know, you know, if you have a whole bunch of snow on the ground, you can tell if someone's been walking through it, because there, there will be tracks. Um, so you can you can definitely play with the the whole idea of of something being there that shouldn't be there or something not being there that should be there. Um, that's really I really think that's what a lot of things it boils down to really. I mean I guess you have I guess you have like I don't know slasher films and stuff too which don't really follow that necessarily I, I don't really like horror films um i mean i've i i've enjoyed murder mystery books I used to love murder mystery books as a kid don't read as much anymore but um but i've never been a big fan of like scary movies i don't know making them would be fun but there you know there's a there's a difference there between like i did i did like a little a little short film sort of thing that was uh am i planning to dirty pour clear and diamond dust with black is black i don't think so i think i'm going to mix up both separately and then do them in kind of uneven layers um because i think i want them to be slightly bigger pockets of each color 
then I would end up with, with the dirty pour, which would be finer layers probably. Um, and I don't really, I don't really want them to mix as much as I want to have like kind of both in their own little pieces. So I think, I think I'm probably going to mix them up separately and then add them with like a pipette to kind of keep them kind of separate, but have kind of different, different pockets of each thing. Um, that's my thought anyways. I do love a good dirty pour, but I don't think that's what I want for this set. Since I just have the two colors, I like the dirty pours for like, when I'm doing like a bunch of colors, usually. So for something like this, where I, I definitely want to see both colors individually and have them kind of separate, I want a nice opaque black and a nice clear, clear, we'll just, uh, we'll just do them separate. Not to say that that's a bad idea. I, like I said, I do love dirty pores, but I don't think that's what I want for this one. I did do a Petri last night. I don't know if this is it. I wonder if it's finally to the point where I could unmold some things and we can see how it looks. Should we take a, should we take a short break and unmold some things from, from last night and see how they look? I think we could do that. Give me a second here. Let me use this last little bit of gold foil. My brush is shedding a little bit. I just lost uh, one of the hairs from my brush. There we go. Stretch. I'll do that in just a moment. Let me just get these. Let me get this last little piece of gold off of my finger and then I can stretch. I think it would get in the way at the moment though. I just get gold foil on everything. But that's good because I, I'm definitely sitting here hunched over. Alright, 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 alright. Oh, okay, time to stretch. It's always, it's always my arms that I always stretch. Where did they go? I sit, I sit over here hunched. I'll stand up for a minute. If anybody else, if anybody else has been hunched over for the past uh, two hours. Oh man, I've been streaming for two hours. Time goes by fast. Uh, you know, might be, might be time to, to do a little bit of stretching. Oh. You know, get, if you've been drawn, get your, get your fingers all stretched. If you've been sitting, get your upper back and neck all rolled out, maybe stand up for a minute. Oh. And I will come back to this in a moment, because I do, let's, let's unmold some things. Let's see how things, some things turned out. Why am I walking to? They're right here. All right, so like I was saying, I tried some Petri ones last night. Let's see how they turned out. I always, I always have trouble with, oh, that turned out funky on top. Yeah, I think I pulled these out a little bit too early, but I think it'll be okay. I can, I'll end up, uh, I'll end up probably standing that side anyways. Oh, wait, I think these turned out, guys. Oh, yeah, these turned out, guys. Let's see if I can get it to see. Oh. Let me see if, what I can grab here so you can see. Let's see if I can get it so you can see. There we go. So this is for a, so it's purple and then like a bright pink. Um, and these are for a, just a fun little um, thing that, uh, from one of the dice groups. I have cat hair in my mouth. Lava lamp. That's a good. Yeah, I like that comparison. Um, 
uh, but it was it's like a it was like a color palette sort of like thing um, where someone would like assign you a, a color palette and so the one that you know it was it is in like a, a dice group that I was part of uh, and the one that I got is uh, it's called makeup and it's in the middle there it's that pink and purple and yellow and so my plan was to do you know the pink with like the the purple as a uh, Petri, and then I'm gonna do the numbers in like that, in like a yellow orange, because I think that'll be a nice contrast. And it was just fun. It was just fun to have like a little, a little, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, um, prompt. I guess prompt is a good word. Like a little, a little prompt to work off of. I'm gonna set this on my tray mold because those need to cure a little bit more, and I don't want to set them down on something that will dent them. Okay, so there's a D12. Down. That's definitely still, definitely still a little dirty. I, yeah, I am, I am pleasantly surprised with how well that, that Petri turned out. I feel like I always either add too much or too little, or I do it at the wrong time or something, and so I end up with either no tendrils in it, or I end up with like way too much. So that that seems like a good good amount, I think. Yeah, this is still very very uh, raw. I don't want to put too many fingerprints on these yet. Yeah. Ooh, I like the. The colors are lovely. There we go. There, that's a good shot. You can see that purple and that pink there. I think it turned out well. This one, D8 down. No. Oh, so steep. Gotta sleep. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely, I'll definitely message you with a picture of how the the ones with the the black and the diamond dust turn out for sure. But uh, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sending these too. Hopefully, hopefully they work out all all fun. Oof. Yeah, these ended up a little bit funky on the one side, but I think I'll be able to fix it. Oh, it's always my pleasure. I enjoy streaming, but glad you could stop by. Alrighty, let's... Yeah, the, the tops of these are definitely funky. I don't, I'm not even going to touch the tops. I don't know if it's because I took them out of the pressure pot too soon, um, but they're definitely funky on top. Um, you can see, look at that. They look like the moon. Um, part of it, I think, is just because the, all of the, all of the ink made them very soft, but I think part of it might be because I took them out a little bit soon. So some of that stuff like decompressed weird, but like I said, I think I could fix that, which uh, it, it looks like a big, big issue, but we'll, we'll see. I might be able to just add some UV resin there and, and flatten it out and then sand it. Turn it down. Let me get, and all, all of these seem to be like that, so it might be. I don't know which which one of those things it might be, but it could be a combo. But I do think that I can fix it. And if not, that's fine. I don't know, they, they might just end up as dice for me or something. I don't actually keep a lot of the dice that I make for myself. I have a few. I have a few. The, um... Ooh, this one, this one, 
has a raised face for sure. Mm. Um, the are they still on my yes the the melted crayon dice that I think are still in my shop. I'm pretty sure they're still in my shop. I don't think those sold. Um, I was originally going to keep those for myself because I liked the colors. Um, and then basically at this point I've made other dice that I personally I like the colors a little bit more um, and so I'm just like I do really like these but I think I'm just gonna add them to the shop because someone else might like them as well and I can make myself more dice and that's that's kind of I guess where I'm at is like I can always make myself dice later and then I don't really I have a few sets that were early sets that I made. Um, I have a set of just plain old orange dice. They're kind of a, a salmon-y color with, with white numbers that uh, I made for myself. I, it was one of the, the ones that I wanted. Um, I have some of the original uh, space, like galaxy dice that I've made. I have some, and I don't necessarily have full sets either of the different dice that I've made. These are, yeah, they're definitely messed up on the on the top there. But I think, I think I'll, we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. The ten. Oh, fingers crossed. Mm, I think I pulled them out too soon. I think maybe that was my issue. I should have just left them in and pulled them out in the middle of the stream. These are going to stay in here a little bit longer. These ones I want, don't want to mess up. But let me, let me, pull, let me unmold the last of these just so I can get them out of the way. Oof, this one also is... Yeah, I think I must have just pulled these out too soon. I think that's probably what caused this. Because it seems to be on multiples of the dice. Not just this style. I don't know. I don't know. Could very well, well be that. Then and that might just be on me. So we four. To be fair, also if I got my own resin printer, I'm going back to an, an earlier conversation I was having about whether I want to order some some more masters for like some chunky D20s, for like a, for like a big t jumbo D20 and like a D2 and some stuff like that. If I want to try and print them myself, get myself a resin printer. Um, if I got, yeah, I think I must have pulled them out too early. Um, if I got a resin printer, I could do fun shaped dice too. Like I could do different shapes. I could start designing unique things. I could do completely different shape D4. So there's like, I don't know, it, it opens up more options to me, I guess. I'm just, I'm just talking this through with myself, I guess, out loud. Just trying to decide which way I want to go. Again, it has to, it'll end up having to do with like price and convenience too. I'll have to figure out, you know, how to make my own files and things as well. This looks oh, that's kind of fun. These are just a little, kind of a little, a little funky. It's just it, this, these were some leftovers, so just some pink and some some orange there. It's just kind of fun. 
It's kind of fun because the pink looks very different with the purple than it does with the orange, even though it's the same pink. Color really is dependent on what's next to it. I do like this bright pink though. I like a good hot pink. It's just fun. It's just a fun color. I like bright colors in general. If you couldn't tell by the dice that I make. I do think that's been kind of my... Uh, uh, what do you want to call it? Um, style? I, I don't know. Um, uh, oh, what do you call that? I guess style. I guess style works. It's, it's just very, very bright saturated colors. That's how I make a lot of things with bright saturated colors. I just use the I just use the colors straight out of the tube. Don't mix anything. I just use that that bright red and that bright bright blue and the yellow. Okay. Now that I have these out of the way. This is D. Oh, okay. Move these. Okay. Uh, and let's go back to adding some gold here. So what were we doing? We're adding gold to this. That's what we were doing. Oh. oh, man, I'm tired. This is what I get. This is what I get for staying up late. That's what you get for falling asleep. I'd like to figure out, like, what's required to do, like, covers of songs. That'd be really fun. The problem is that I don't play an instrument that I could sing at the same time. I do love singing, but I don't play, like, guitar or anything. I play, the, well, it's been a long time, but I did play the trombone for quite a few years. But that's not exactly something that I can, I can play while singing. Because it would be fun to do, like, some sort of covers or something. But I, I, again, copyright stuff, I'd have to figure that out. And that just sounds, like, confusing. <laughs> I do have a friend that plays guitar. Maybe I could convince them to come stream with me for music stuff. I'd probably do that. She's pretty comfortable on camera. Come on, get out of there. Oh, let's put a little bit on the lid here, as we've been doing. My fingers are all covered in just like purple now. They're so, they're just kind of sticky with purple resin. Oh man, I definitely took those out too early. This was a mistake. I'm slowly moving my dice over to having this uh, crystal shape. Because I like it just a little bit more. It's not going to hurt as much if you step on it. And with my cats, who like to try and steal things, that's, a, that's an added bonus. To be fair, at this point I have a couple of like... Um, so I got the... I started out getting like the cheap wish molds, basically. Um, to try make, out making dice. 
and then I quickly moved to making my own molds and everything. Um, but that set came with some like some some big chunky ones, big chunky dice molds. Um, and I have a couple, I had a couple of like D10s that I made, they were just random resin. And I've given at least one of those to uh, one of my cats, because she loves dice, which is a problem. Maybe I should not have done that, I feel like it was a bad idea maybe to uh, teach her that it's okay to play with dice, but uh, that one's, that one's hers. Alright, and then the D6. Oh. And then we'll, we'll get everything set up and then we'll pour some resin. Because I'm tired. So I want to... I want to get things all set. Oh, I might need to... Mm, I might need to work on some more tax stuff after this probably. Oh, here's a kitty cat. Which one is it? I think that. Ah, oh, it's Fitz. Hello, Fitz. It's it's the cat that's mad that he's inside. Pretty sure that's Fitz. Sounds like him. I can I can tell which of my four cats is at the door. They all they all sound different. They all let me know that they are there in different ways, too, to be fair. Because two of them will actually scratch at the door, and I can tell you which one is scratching at the door, too. Because, let's see, Not, Not will sometimes scratch at the door, and sometimes she'll yell at the door to let me know that she wants in. Luna and Fitz just yell. And Koshi mostly just scratches, but uh, Koshi has a very just like relaxed sort of "Hello, please let me in." And not will get up there and be like, <sighs> not the, not the hissing sound, but just like this at the door. All right, we've got all of our gold in there. Don't need that. And then let me get some mixing cups set up. So. Let me grab, let me grab maybe a clean one for this black because I do want to maybe make a little, um, like a little testing, tester wheel as well. That sounds weird. One of my little, one of my little chips that I, that, that I use. So that one's going to be black. And that one's going to be clear. We'll just grab a, we'll grab a clean one for, for that as well. And again, I don't know, I don't know how that's going to work, but we'll see. I am curious to know how this black will fare. It definitely isn't, like, I can definitely see the outline of the individual grains, which means that it's not as black as it could be, but, so it still has some sort of reflection to it. It's very, very dark. Yeah, actually, you can kind of see, too. There you go, yeah. So this is black 1.0. So let's grab a little bit of this and put it into the cup. Let me and grab a little stick. There we go. I don't know how much we'll need. I, don't, I, I imagine we won't need a ton. So we're probably going to do about 15... Actually, we might do a little bit less of a black. So we're going to do, well, we'll say 15. Do about 15 milliliters of this. So let's add a little bit. Might actually end up darker once it's in the dye. Um, I've noticed with some of my pigments that um, they look darker once they're, they have been cured in the dye, or in the resin. Um... It'll be like it'll be like a light pink, and then I'll put it in the resin. And once I pull it out, it's like a darker pink. But let me let me think here about how much of this I will probably need for. I don't really know necessarily how much I'll need for like 15 milliliters. Let's put a little bit more. I'll put another 
couple of little little scoops. That's probably plenty, I would think. So we'll we'll see. So there's the black, all ready to go. And then this one is going to be clear. We're going to try though. We're going to see what happens if we put some of this diamond dust in it. And this stuff is pretty much crushed up glass. So this is really just shed, you know, shards of glass. So I don't know. I don't know if it's going to show up at all. It might be the exact same, you know, uh, refraction index as, as the resin. So it might not even show up. But we'll find out. Also, might all sink to the bottom. Uh, I think I'm going to end up doing these last, so that they are the resin's a little bit thicker, and that'll actually be to our benefit because then hopefully the glitter and stuff will suspend a little bit better. Go ahead, let's add some more of this. It is very very glittery though. Yeah, let's, that should be plenty, I would think. So again, we're gonna do 15 milliliters, and then make sure I don't. Yep, make sure that's all closed up because again, it's glass. Don't need don't need glass shards everywhere. Let me find a little a little stir stick for this as well. Let me just get this one. I think I can get the resin off of. good enough. I'm going to use just a little tiny bit of this sparkly mica just to add a little bit of like a smaller glitter as well. Not very much, just, just a little bit. I don't want to make it like opaque or anything. I just want to make it glittery. And then we'll see how that does. All right, that's all set up. Let me make sure I've got everything. Um, so that's going to be a mix of those two. I need probably pipettes for those. There's one, one for the black. One for the clear. Um, oh yeah. So this is going to be clear. That's going to be clear. This one I need a little cup for the blue. And that needs some gold foil in it as well. I'm actually going to use, I'm going to try and be kind of sparing with the gold foil a little bit. Because it's also going to have a gold chest piece in it. And I want it to show up. So we're just going to add, just going to add a little tiny piece of gold foil. And that'll, that'll get broken up into smaller pieces when I mix it in with the blue. But, is that that? Clear, clear, the dark blue, and also some clear. And then these ones will get mixed together. And then whatever is left, I'm going to be coloring white and adding to the tops of these dominoes. And hopefully I can finish these off tonight. And that is, I think, the plan. I think that is everything. So... Let's let's pour some resin, I think. The hair there. Um three, six, seventy, and then about thirty milliliters. I think that might actually work out. I think it might work out. We're just gonna do hundred milliliters again of of resin. Each each set of dice takes about uh thirty milliliters. This one will actually take a little bit less because it has it's already been filled up a little bit. I might be able to do another set of dice instead. 
I try doing another set of dice instead. Hmm, do I want to do another set of dice? I think I'm just going to go for it. Let's just, let's just do 100 milliliters. If I end up having a whole bunch left after I do these sets of dice, I might pull out some more molds and we'll do some sort of impromptu uh, dice, but yeah. Anyway, let's just go for it. All right, let me grab my, let me grab my respirator. So I'm gonna be a little bit muffled, probably the rest of this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sound like this. Just cause, you know, it's good to be safe. I wanna make sure I'm not breathing in a whole bunch of resin fumes. And then, ah, I get my, oh, one thing. I'm being lazy. I'm being lazy again and just grabbing a, a clean measuring cup. Instead of trying to clean one of the ones that I, I have sitting off to the side here. This still has resin scraps in it. I'm just tired though, so I don't want to have to deal with that. This one's a little bit, that's a little bit of an issue. As long as it's not split, doesn't have any holes. That's the important part. All right. Okay, let's go. All right, so have this part. Uh, the second part. Ooh, what's that? Mattermuns is now following. Oh, thanks for following. I need to order. I have that written on my to-do list for Tuesday as well. I think is to order more resin. So we're gonna do we're gonna do a hundred milliliters of resin. So uh, we're gonna be doing fifty of each. Uh, I'm gonna be rather quiet for a minute. Well, I measure this because I can't talk and measure at the same time. So I'm going to be just a second. I'll be right back. Let's go sick. This will be a skip. Yeah, this could be a little bit too much. Let's see. No, actually, that might be about perfect, actually. I'll just add a little dollop more. And it's very, very close to 50. I'm just right below the line. And I don't want to add very much more. Yeah, that's, that might very well be a little too much. It's very hard to pour this. It's so viscous. It's so hard to, to pour it accurately. That's why I do this one first. Um, this one's a little bit thinner. It's a little bit liquidier. Uh, and so it's a little bit easier to keep accurate. We're gonna we're gonna add this part next. And again, I'm doing 50 milliliters of each. That's not even cat hair, that's my hair. Get out of here. Just a piece of my hair just sitting here now. Usually it's cat hair. 
I was going to try and blow that. That's not going to work. All right. So now I'll make sure this is all stirred up completely. That'll take, this will take, you know, a couple minutes. I'm going to make sure both parts are mixed together completely. If they're not mixed together completely, it won't cure right. So best to, best to get it all mixed up. But uh, let's see. What have I been up to? Uh, what's exciting with, with me? Uh, I'm not very exciting. into a rhythm at this point I guess with like just kind of a, a schedule for, for working and everything like I'm not doing much that's interesting <laughs> I really should start figuring out um, YouTube videos my, my issue at the moment is getting video files to my computer um, I do have a, vi a video camera but I've uh, it's, it's, trying to get the files from the video camera to my computer just is just confusing. It's it's you know I don't know if it's like the proper adapter or something. I don't know if I can plug it in with just USB, but it doesn't seem to work that way. I wish I could just plug it in with USB. Um, I like. It, it is making me realize that probably like the easiest kind of video to film is like a let's play or you know something like this where I can just use the built-in camera that's on my computer. If I was trying to do like art uh, videos I'd want an external camera. I guess I could do that here with uh, you know just move the webcam where I want it. But do that get a close up or something. Oh, maybe I'll try that at some point. Maybe I'll try filming in this space with the webcam. Maybe just maybe position it a little bit different. But as I said before too, I just got Minecraft, so maybe I will I will videotape me uh, fumbling my way through playing Minecraft for the, like the first time. That's kind of something I was I was thinking as well. And I realized that that game has existed forever. Like my my brother's been playing it for years, but I just got it recently and I'm having fun. I don't I don't play a lot of video games. I, I don't know, I just don't make the time to play them. Um, I don't feel like I have the hand-eye coordination for a lot of them, too. Like, as soon as something starts attacking me, I freak out. I love puzzle games. Um, I do like puzzle games. But once something starts shooting at me, or I'm, there's a timer at all, I'm just like, ah! Oh no, I need to do things! And it just doesn't end up well. But, I don't know, that one's, that one's fun. I was playing it with my brother and, and a friend. And just, the, it's, it's kind of a chill game. Like, it's relaxing to just go, like, dig a whole bunch or, you know, work on building something. Try and figure out, like, what do I want my ceiling to look like? I do want to, like, recreate my house in Minecraft. I think that would be fun. I might do that at some point. Whether I film it or not. But that's that's probably my, my recent thing. Uh, let's see. Like critical role in D D was definitely my what I was obsessing over for a while there. And now it's Minecraft. Just uh whew. Hmm, 
it's getting closer. I can still see some streaks in there, and it's not completely clear yet. Because it's not quite completely mixed, and I need it to be completely mixed. So I'm trying not to mix too much air in here. I'm getting some bubbles. Um, it's not a huge deal. Just because uh, I have a, a pressure pot, which will you know, push some of those bubbles down. And once I put it in like smaller containers, some of those bubbles can rise to the surface easier and pop. I, you know, I don't want I don't want to put as, like a whole bunch of air in here or anything. Ooh. Ooh. I need to. Mm. Man, taxes are gonna be weird this year. I've had like four different sources of income this year. Two two main ones, but like it's gonna be a little weird. I uh. Uh, I quit my job to go back to school at the end of last year, not last year, at the end of 2019, I quit my job to go back to school full time so I could finish my bachelor's, and I just had like, I had one more semester left, but I couldn't fit it in with work, um, and then I graduated in May, right after quarantine struck, so things were a little weird about, you know, looking for work. So I have, I've, I've had all sorts of, I've had a couple weird gig jobs, I guess, this year. But mostly I, I did Uber Eats for a while there, which was, it has been quite lucrative during the pandemic. Um, I did actually enjoy that. Uber Eats was actually enjoyable for me. Uh, it was nice that I didn't have to like, figure out what I needed to do. It very much tells you, you know, every step as, as you're doing it. So it's just like, okay, drive to this location. And then you click, okay, I'm at the location. And it says, great, pick up this order. And then you're like, great, I picked up that order. And they're like, okay, drive to this location and drop it off. I'm like, great. And that's like, this is, this is how my brain works. I have one instruction at a time. Excellent. And then, I mean, and then at this point, I have my, my Etsy shop, which is uh, my main source of income at the moment. So, I don't know. Ta taxes are going to be a little bit weird. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start working on figuring those out tomorrow. But no, I've had, yeah, and then like, let's see, I did a couple of different commercial things, like local commercials this year, which I got paid for. So things are just, yeah, I have some weird random income. Yeah, which was fun. I enjoy doing stuff like that. Like, the, the random commercials, you know, it was outside, I was biking around, they just needed some, like, shots of, of me biking around and looking at random statues in, like, the downtown area. And then, did like a photo shoot of it was they they were trying to promote like this this like this uh, I don't know what you want to call it it's an area that has kind of some parks and some, like some restaurants and stuff they're trying to promote that area and so you know it's like oh look at these walking paths and that sort of stuff so you know I was biking around outside while they filmed every once in a while uh, you know stop at a statue goes like I love this statue or whatever. And then, you know, bike off again. Which, I, it's, I don't know. It's kind of funny, like, I overheat really easy in the sun. But, like, biking around, even though it was really hot out, I was fine. I don't know. I guess it's kind of like, I did marching band in high school. And when I'm in, like, that mindset of, 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 I'm not me at the moment, I'm playing another person, I can just kind of shut off, you know, you kind of get into like a, the show must go on sort of mindset where you just kind of shut off all external stimulation to a certain extent, you just kind of focus on like what, 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 you know, I don't know, the show I guess. And I, you know, I can, there's a certain amount of, of, if I'm like sick, I can still 
do a song and dance number if I if I need to, and then once the song and dance number's over, I'm gonna be sick again. But like while I'm doing the song and dance number, it's just like you make a little a little compartment there where it's just like this is I will deal I'm not dealing with this right this second. Okay, I think this is all nice and mixed. It looks like looks like all the, the streaks are gone, so I think we're good to go. Uh, let's do these ones first. This is all of the desert ones. Oh, crap. You know what I didn't do? I didn't grab all of this off of here. I need this. I need this tray. So I can put all of my molds on it. Flat. That's the important part. I don't want these parts to stick up. But as long as it's flat, I can stick everything on here. But part of the reason that I like this tray is because I can peel off all the all the resin. This stuff's a little bit soft, but that's probably because uh, it has so much ink in it. perfectly clean or not. We just need to uh, find a spot to set these. Hmm, this might get easier to do with pipette. Let me, let me use a pipette for this, I think. I want to try and make sure that the all of the cracked iron you know, in place, not going to fall over or anything, so let's, uh, let's just use a pipette. Then I can fill in around everything like a little bit more evil, evenly if I don't have a whole bunch of resin on one side pushing on something. in the mold. Oops, just a second. There's a little bit of... Maybe this is part of the cumin. There we go. I'll get that out of the way. Uh, I want to fill up these molds until they are over... not overflowing, but they're domed a little bit at the top. I want just a little bit of extra resin in, in these. And that is so that when I put these in the pressure pot and all of the bubbles that are in them squish down really, really small. Um, there is extra resin to take their place. Otherwise you'll end up with like weird gaps and stuff at the top, which I've had happen before. It's just annoying. You know. I want the dice to be usable. Okay, that seems to be doing good. Ooh, let's see how these turn out. I guess the the nice thing about you know these is that even if they don't necessarily turn out like even if they do turn out but they're not what the person who ordered wants, um, you know I have it built into my commissions that you get a couple free free reports. You don't get to keep like all the dice or anything, but ooh. But you know, it is it is built in that you know if it's not quite what you're looking for, I'll I'll try it again. But I think these are gonna turn out cute. I think these are gonna be very very cute. 
how you can see this. These definitely have some, some big bubbles at the top. And we will all pop those in a minute. But let's get all these filled first. So much resin is just flowing in here. Okay, there's that one. enjoy making dice. I just enjoy making things in general. There's something, I, I've always been kind of an artsy person. Like, I just, all, all the arts, all the, all the arts. But just, I don't know, there, I, there's something satisfying. You returned with sliders. Mmm. Sounds yummy. Welcome back. I've just been rambling to myself. Um, Bosun had to head out. Uh, but otherwise, I don't, th I don't think you've miss missed much. It's mostly just been me rambling to myself. But I mean, that is pretty much every stream, I suppose. <laughs> oh no! What did you, did you, did you just like undercook them a little bit or something? But also, burger sounds really good. Mmm, burger. Do we have burgers? Ah. Ah, oh, well, sounds like you, as long as you got it all sorted out in the end. Oh, yeah, okay, good. Yeah, it's not like it's, it's uncooked or something. That would be, that would be unfortunate if it was, like, completely raw. Don't really want to eat raw, like, raw uh, ground beef. It's not really something you want. Not a great idea, anyways. I was reading a thing, it was kind of interesting. So part of the reason that you can eat, like, uh, raw beef, but not, like, well, not raw, but, like, rare beef, or, or medium rare beef, but not rare chicken, is because of how, uh, like, various, like, Parasites and diseases and stuff attach themselves to the to the meat because like like beef all the the stuff that you really don't want ends up on the outside of it whereas the chicken it can be permeated through the whole thing I don't know necessarily how accurate that is or anything but it sounded like it made sense so I thought it was interesting and I'm adding a little bit of extra resin to the lid as well and it's for sort of the same reason as what I said before I want there to be a little bit of extra resin so that uh, when I put these into the pressure pot you know there's a little bit of resin to take the place of where all the air bubbles are going to squish down and also I don't want any air to get trapped between the lid and the base of the of the uh, the mold so I'll put this resin here and make sure that all like air bubbles that are trapped in the numbers and stuff get popped before I put the lid on. So there's this one, and there's this one. Yeah, but I really just need a little bit of the resin here so that I can so that I can kind of fill in those those numbers and everything. Let that sit for a minute. Okay, I need a little bit of this over in here. A little bit more than that. Oh wait, actually, you know what else needs to clear? This needs to clear. So this one, these are these have some some plants, and this one has a roly poly in it. I might actually pull that roly poly out. I'm gonna do something that will hopefully make it so that the roly poly does not doesn't sink too much. And that is, I'm gonna shove it in there for a second. 
to make sure everything else is, is seated properly. So why I'm putting it in there is that hopefully then I can get some of the, um, make sure that it also doesn't have like air bubbles around it. getting caught in all those those little crevices so let's put that back in there it'll hopefully help keep it from floating too much it probably will still float a little bit but that should hopefully help a little bit There's always cat hair. Put this over here so it is out of the way. And I'll do the other one that's also clear. Oops. Just trying to get all of that out of here. And it's not a big deal because I am planning on using this over here later. But it's just going to be easier for me to do that. There we go. Get this over here out of the way. And there's definitely some, some bubbles in some of these numbers, so that's, that's okay for now. much of this so that's well, that's probably good. Let me do let me do this first. Let's try that with just one drop of blue first. Let's see if it's dark enough. Um, yeah I think that's gonna be dark enough. It's such a small amount of, of resin I think that'll be good. gonna get this dark blue with the gold foil put into here and it's gonna kind of sink to the bottom a little bit hopefully it should end up as just kind of a layer on the bottom and I'm gonna let that sit and let that settle and I'm gonna wait to do actually I'm gonna grab a container here because uh, I am going to want a little bit of this clear for the top there. I'm going to put that to the side because I, I'm, I, so I don't forget to leave some clear. Set this. Let's set this uh, over here for now. We'll fix that. And then let's move on to let's move on to our black and glittery set. Let's see here. So I'm, I want about about fifteen milliliters of each. Um, and I could, the clear is going to like not show up as much as the black, but I want it to look like there's more black, so I'm just going to go even, I think. And I, again, I don't know how, I don't know how the, 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 the this sort of glitter is going to work. We're, we're going to do it, this set of dice last, so that hopefully that stuff will end up suspended in the dice. Alright, I'll just mix these up and we'll see how these look. Mm, I'm definitely getting a nice inky blue. 
black. Actually, oh, let me add a little bit extra to this because I'm going to leave a little bit of the black in this container. We're going to use it as a, I'm going to use it as like a, a little, a little paint chip. I'll uh, hold on to it with the rest of my stuff, and it'll act as just kind of a like a, you know, like a little paint chip. It looks nice and okay. I do wonder how this compares to just like my actually charcoal blue. Hmm. Alright, there's, there's a good black, and then let's try mixing up this, because it's clear, and then it has some, oh, yeah, I don't know if it's going to show up or not. Maybe it will. So this has uh, some uh, diamond dust, which is like the glitteriest glitter in it. The thing is that the diamond dust is like little shards of glass so it's very very you know it's very very glittery here but it blends in with the resin i think we'll see actually it might this might work out i don't know I might see it a little bit so the, the thing is i don't know if it's going to be all that glittery in here or not or if it's just going to disappear. It's kind of disappearing a bit, but once we get it into the, the molds and stuff, it's possible that once it's like cured and stuff, when you like tilt it a little bit, you'll be able to see like the different kind of uh, front, like angles and stuff. It'll look like little breaks in the resin. I'm kind of seeing that a little bit, I think, in here. Yeah, it has a little bit, not necessarily glittery, but it kind of gives some like sort of striations almost. Like, uh, like I was almost like uh it's like when you have like a a um what is it i'm just trying to think of uh we have enough for one more set of dice should we do one more set of dice or should i i'm gonna finish these i'm just gonna finish these i want these to be finished so we're gonna we're gonna go for that let me just take this down a little bit so this is this is a set of dominoes. I haven't actually made a set of dominoes before, and so I want I want these to be done so that I can I can see them, see how they turn out. And I think everything's fairly flat now. That was my concern. I just want everything to be flat enough that I want it so that you know you can't tell which one's which from the top. So we're gonna, and I think 30 milliliters is actually gonna be about the right amount to finish filling this in. Let me make sure. Let me make sure that I have everything that I need. I think that's. I think that's everything that I need. Yeah, I think that's everything that I need. So. Yeah, we're just gonna. Go for it. After this white. I'm gonna add a drop of this white. And I'm gonna add. A little bit of this shimmer. Okay, this works. Just a little bit of shimmer. And we'll mix that all up. Yeah, hopefully I have enough clear there. I think I do. Let me, I might need to add more white. It's not quite as opaque as I would have liked. And I'll show you in just a moment. You know, I feel like, I feel like it could be a little bit more opaque. It's definitely, you know, it's definitely close. But I wanted a little bit more white, not quite as, like, milky. I want it, like, white white, not milky white. Um, yeah, and that's part of the reason I'm using this white, uh, is because it's a little bit more opaque, but I like the color of this white a little bit better, so we're, we're adding both. And that 
helps. That helps a bit. And I can actually see a little bit of the shimmer, which is nice. I can actually see some of the some of the glitter. Oh, that nice shimmer. That I think that's maybe opaque enough. It's eh, I'm concerned that I'm gonna add one more drop of white. I'm just concerned that once I add it and it's thin, it's gonna show some of that color through, and that's what I do not want. Like I said, these these are dominoes, so I want it so when they're face down on the table, you can't tell which one's which. That is the that is the the goal here. So I want this opaque enough that you can't see all of this these little these little pieces through. You know, I want those to be completely covered. I guess I could do that with like black or something, but I like the white as a background. I think I guess the, it is white as a background, but let's just let's just continue with the white. I think I want a pipette for this. Let's grab a clean pipette. Again, I want to do these and this one last because I want them to be a little bit thicker. I don't. I want all of my my stuff to stay stay suspended in this one. And I don't want my colors to mix in that one, which is why I'm gonna do that one later as well. Okay, I think this is. I think this is definitely a little bit more opaque. Let's see how it looks in here. Yeah, I think that's definitely opaque. I think we're. I think we're gonna be okay. So let's. Uh, and cover these. Yeah, I think that'll be good. I think we're gonna be good. And it definitely has a little bit of shimmer, which is what I wanted. There's probably not gonna be enough resin, to be fair. These uh this mold takes a lot of resin for a full set of a full set of dominoes. I I did the math and each each cavity takes about 10 milliliters of resin. Keep in mind that a full set of dice takes 30. So, you know, three dominoes is equivalent to a full set of dice when it comes to the amount of resin. Um, but, so each one takes 10, and then there was, what, 24? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 is 28. 28. Um, there's 28 cavities, so that's, you know, 280 milliliters of resin that uh, this mold takes overall. Which is not an insignificant amount of resin. Um, like I said, the, uh, yes, so this is 280 milliliters for a full set of dominoes. Um, one of the little trays that I've, I've made, that takes 100 milliliters. A uh, full set of dice takes about 30. I'm glad that this is nice and opaque though. Yeah, I'm happy with this color. I am still concerned that I'm not going to have enough resin. I might end up just doing one set, but I have... My concern with only doing the one is that I won't be able to get the color exactly the same again. But I think I'm going to end up doing that because I'd rather get... most. Uh, yeah, I'd rather do half and half, I guess. I think that I think that white will work out. I can still see like a little bit. I think once I have it like domed a little bit, it'll be fine. Costume creations. How is it going? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. A little tired. I stayed up way too late last night, which is on me. But I'm uh, working on working on stuff as always. <laughs> oh, just crushing them. Yeah. How are you doing? I think I saw that you had some, some projects that you'd like finished up over on Instagram. I think that was you. Yeah, this is 
Yeah, we're just gonna be doing the one. We'll do that set later. You good? Go ahead to hear it. Go ahead to hear it. Start making some pots. Ooh, cool. That's cool. Are you sticking with the, uh, con haven't, let's see, haven't streamed in a while working on video setup. I was talking about that earlier, because I was, I've been talking about doing, like, YouTube videos, but just figuring out, figuring out, like, the setup and, and like, how I'm going to get files transferred and everything, it's just been like, uh, hi, Dr. Sci-Fi. It is, I, I am finished, working on getting some, some dominoes set up at the moment. While I let things thicken up a little bit before I add the, the resin to these molds. But, working on, working on all sorts of things. I, I've already added all the, uh, yeah, that's what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, there's just, like, there's just kind of a different, I don't know, YouTube videos and streaming are completely different, at least in my brain. There's a different, different skill set and stuff that's needed for both. And like, I don't know, YouTube videos definitely take a little bit more polish to a certain extent. It's a different ball game and yeah, an audience, exactly. Like they're they're very different. Uh darn it, I think I'm gonna Gosh, this mold just takes so much resin. Sorry, what about dice? What about my dice? Oh, if you filmed it in a cinematic way. Oh, yeah. Mm, to be fair, that's one of the things I'm, I'm trying to figure out, too, is what sort of vibe I want for videos. Because, on the one hand, I could do the whole, like, music and, and just, you know, images of, of what's happening. But also, I'm very much a person that talks a lot, so, you know, I might be someone who does, like, a voiceover. But, you know, figuring out what what I want the style to be as well. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to do another layer. How unfortunate. <laughs> Rolling them with sunshine behind them. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. Like, there's, there's different, like, there's different styles of, like, videos. Um, and this is something I actually was, I wrote down and I was, I was thinking on. Because, like, oh, did you have a walkthrough? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's kind of what I'm saying. Like, I feel like I'd be more of, like, a, a walkthrough or, like, here's me trying out different arts and crafts things that I haven't necessarily done doing some walkthroughs and then like some just arts and crafts type things but um yeah there's a lot of like satisfying videos that are just music and, and, and images which I like but they put me to sleep but you know I, you know there's I, I, I like I think my favorite types of videos to watch are the ones where it's focused on like what they're making, but also like the person is kind of like s talking about what they're doing while they're while they're working on it, or or they have a voiceover talking about what they're doing. I don't know; they, those keep me engaged. But I I tend to like listen to videos more than I watch them to a certain extent. So like, it's just kind of nice to have have the audio as well. It's funny because I usually either am watching a video or listening to a video. I don't usually do both. But, but, no, to be fair, part of the reason I, uh, was thinking of doing YouTube videos, because I, I, you know, I was looking at doing YouTube videos before I ever started streaming, um, and part of it is because I watch YouTube videos more than I watch streams, 
And bec also because with resin stuff, and actually, to be fair, this started because I was doing soap. Um, uh, all the stuff behind me is soap making supplies. With both of those things, you don't get to see how it turns out until the next day. So, like, you know, it's fun having everybody come and hang out while I am working on resin projects and dice and all that stuff, but you guys don't get to see how it looks in the same sitting. Whereas with YouTube videos, you know, I, I could have it so that you both see the process and how it turns out in the same, you know, five minutes, 20 minutes span, whatever length things end up being. Which, so, you know, there's, there's that whole aspect to it, which, yeah. And like I was saying, you know, I, I, part of it's just I just watch more YouTube videos. I watch stream. I don't have the attention span for for stream. I feel like streams are streams are more of a social thing, and I like being able to pause my videos. All right, pulling out my little two tier things. I put this down here. I was right. My uh, my bug in this one has has risen. Push that back down. This one also has more resin in it. Just still in a little bit of, of clear resin from around these other ones to put over this one. This one has um, some plants and stuff in it, and so it's had all sorts of air rise to the surface and it's made it go down. Okay. There's pros and cons to both, though. Part, part of the reason I ended up streaming and not making videos is because editing. Woo! Oh, thanks for subscribing! That's so sweet. I really appreciate that. I was like, oh, that was loud. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's try these. It's all sky. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. I I it makes me happy that people people like what I make. <laughs> so I'm gonna try this. This has this has some of Oops, I've just gotten resin on that, but it has some of this, this diamond dust in it, which I don't know that we'll be able to see or not, but we're going to try it. Learning some stuff, like sort of thing. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, that really, that really does mean a lot. I'm glad, I'm glad you're having fun and learning some stuff, too. Alright, let's see if I can just type that on this. I don't know how well the balance these are going to end up either. But, we can try. Yeah, exactly. Let's try it. Let's, you know, if they fail, they fail. That's fine. And then we, we've learned something. So I can definitely see all, I think, the glass in there. So what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of layers kind of rough layers of the black and the clear here and these are maybe actually not as thick as I would have liked but that's that's okay um, how can I tell if the dice set is balanced or not um, you can uh, make some salt water so take you know some warm water and put a whole bunch of salt in it and then the dice will float and if you spin the dice around and the same number comes up a whole bunch then it probably means that the dice are weighted. Um, I did, I try to make my dice um, as weighted evenly as possible. Um, no set of dice is going to be perfectly weighted. You know, even even like the mass manufactured ones, you know, just by the nature of the, the numbers being different, they're never going to be, you know, perfectly weighted. But I did, when I was first started making dice, I went and did that with a whole bunch of different sets just to check and make sure I was making dice that were weighted well and they, they seem to be they seem to be working correctly so I, I you know hopefully hopefully all my dice are still doing that um, I try not to add 
too many like heavily weighted things on one side. Um, you know, I, I, that's part of the reason I haven't, I've seen some beautiful handmade dice that have like sand and seashells and stuff in them, but I haven't made any, um, cause I don't want to put like sand on one side of the die cause that's rocks. So I imagine it'd be rather heavy. Um, I mean, on the other hand, I have done like a commission where I put metal chains in a die, but at the same time, you know, I, I told the person, hey, these probably aren't going to be weighted perfectly, because, you know, it's hard to, hard to, hard to put something that's so heavy, you know, um, perfectly weighted. Uh, that's part of, part of why this may not work. There's a couple reasons that I'm not sure how well, how this is going to turn out. Um, one of them is that, uh, that glitter that I just showed, I'm, it's probably, um, it's gonna have that kind of the same refraction as the resin itself, because it's, it's literally just shards of glass, and so it might not show up at all. I can actually kind of see it in here, which does give me, you know, some high hopes that it might actually give some, some texture, even if it's not super glittery. Um, but, you know, it's not, it's not super visible. I don't know how it'll be once it cures, so. Um, and then the other thing is that it's glass, so it might be kind of heavy, and it might all try to sink to the bottom. And that's actually, that's actually an issue that you get with just plain old glitter, too. Um, when you're working, when you're working with resin, just plain old like craft glitter, like the you know stuff you get from the craft store and stuff. That glitter will try to sink in the resin, and so that's part of the reason I was waiting to work, do this set of dice. You know, pretty much last is because if I wait until the the resin is just a little bit thicker, wait till it's towards the end of its work time when it it starts getting really thick. The, and you mix all the glitter up in there, it's, it's harder for the glitter to sink. So it stays suspended better. There's your, there's your fun resin working uh, tip for, for today. But no, I'll, I, yeah, sure. I, I, I love this stuff, so I'm, I'm always happy to explain what I'm doing and how things work, as far as I know. You know, I don't know everything. But yeah, yeah, if you ever have if you ever have any more dice making related questions, I'm always happy to answer them. Or if any you know, if anybody wants to take it up as a hobby or anything, I'm I'm always happy to answer questions people may have. Even if you want to take it up as a job, I suppose it, you know I uh, it's, it's very, I don't know, I just, I like making stuff, I like, I like hearing about other people making stuff too, it's just, it's just fun. Mm, there's definitely some glass in that one. We're going to see how this goes. This is actually not as thick, quite honestly, as I would like for this. And honestly, I probably should have waited a little bit longer. So things may sink quite a bit. We'll see. Got quite a bit of black here. I do think this black is good though. It's good opaque. Good opaque black. Um, I do. I'm. I am curious to compare it to some of the other blacks that I have though, just to see how it compares. This is. This was sent to me by. Uh, one of one of the folks that they were in the chat earlier, but they've they went to bed. But they they went and sent this to me, which was very nice of them. All right, let's let's try and fill in a little bit more with the black. Very nice inky black. I must say something. <laughs> You're still lovingly holding your dice. <sighs> How do they roll? I'm glad I'm glad that you like your dice, Jen. Ah. 
Jen in the chat just got some, some dice from me. Just got them. They just arrived today at Sounds Dark. I'm gonna actually... Ooh, I don't want to put... I'm not gonna put that on the lid. I'm not gonna put this kind on the lid because again it has that gl those glass shards. And so I don't think... I want that getting caught between the lid and the base mold. But so we might end up doing the last there. Yeah, no, I, I I am happy with how those those dice turned out. I think the color change is really nice. I don't know how well that color change will work with just like body heat or anything. I dumped them in some warm water to to make them change. So I don't know, I don't know how well they'll, they'll work just with your body heat or anything, but they did turn out pretty. But also now that you got them, I can post pictures of them on social media. It works okay? Alright! I'm a very, I'm just cold, so you know, I, you know, I'm a bad judge of that. I could have handed them to my brother, I suppose. Mm. What is this? Oh, sweet! Okay, cool! It looks like it, yeah, it looks like it works okay. You got hands. I do not. I guess I could have handed them to my brother. My brother runs very warm. I did have a little bit of kind of white shimmer that I did. It's a good choice. I don't think I want to, mm. So normally I would run my finger along this. To clear this out, let's see if I can do that without, like, stabbing myself or something. I don't want to... I don't want to get, like, glass shards in my finger. Well, we're not, so we're gonna be, we're gonna be careful with this stuff. getting thicker. I think I think actually we're we're not bad with the with the work time. Oh I think a whole bunch of it stuck to the bottom though. I'm, I'm missing a whole bunch of that. Put that in the D20. Excellent, we have a whole bunch of black left. That's what I wanted as well. So we're actually gonna take the black Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna dome these on the top a little bit because I just want to be a little bit extra for when these go in the pressure pot. I'm also gonna take the black and it's gonna go on the lids as well. Oh wow, look how dark that is. Well, I guess it is. It's definitely black. Oh boy, it's definitely opaque. That's for sure. And it's got some black ones over. I do want to leave a little bit of black in there just as a paint chip, but I'm probably going to use a little bit of that. All right. Let me just set these up here out of the way. I have them just kind of laid out here so I can remember which one's which. Head to bed. All right. Have a good night. Thanks for stopping by. I, I'm, I'm curious to know how this turned out as well, so we'll, we'll see. Probably post some photos on, on Instagram or something. If they turn out well. If not, they will never see the light of day. No, uh... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh, and this one, I guess, okay. This one's gonna do that clear. And gently add some clear to the top of this. So I'm gonna fill this in. And this one also, I was waiting till it was a little bit thicker, so I had a layer in there already. 
and I don't want them to mix too much. So if they were thinner, when I put it in, it would displace a whole bunch, but they're just a little bit thicker. It doesn't flow as easily, and it's not going to displace as much. Hopefully. Hopefully, anyways. Um, and then this set is, is, has a dark blue and gold, and then has some swirls of, it's clear with some swirls of red. Let's see if I can get the some red swirls in there. put the last bit of clear on here. Yeah, we're definitely we're get, definitely getting to a point where it's a little bit thicker. done for the night. I just have, you know, a couple things to do. I'm going to, you know, use up a little bit of, I'm probably not going to use up any leftover of this one. This is the one with the glass in it. Um, we're just going to let that cure. Um, I'm going to use up a little bit of this clear, some of this blue, and some of this black, but I'm going to leave some of the black in there, like I said, so that we can just uh, have like a little paint tip of it. So let's do B4, let's do, um, I don't know, this is going to be a, a D, I don't know, D6, maybe, no, D6 is a grab, let's do D8, we'll do D8. I'm slowly adding to my uh, collection of, of, you know, random, random raw dice. I, I added that as a, an option in my shop fairly recently by request. So I'm slowly, surely, just making some, some random dice. And then on the other hand, I um, quite often ship, you know, dice that people order with a spare, like a bonus D4. I have these little, these little crystal shaped D4s. So I try to make, you know, some some extras of the D4s as well, just so I have some of those lying around to, to add to orders. That one, this one, let's just make this a black D4. This one's just going to be black. It's nice. Maybe I'll make it matte. Maybe I'll make it like a, a dark matte black. That might be cool. When I was first starting out, uh, making dice. So when I, yeah, so like when I like first started making dice, um, I most I basically just like messaged. Actually, no, I was still seeing my D and D buddies at that point. But you know, I, I asked my D and D buddies like what their ideal set of dice would be. Same with like my family and stuff too. I I grew up playing D and D. Um, so you know, my my family plays D and D. But um. You know, I was just kind of asking friends and family and D&D &D buddies and all that, like, what's your ideal set of dice and then trying to make them? And one of them wanted a set of matte black dice, and I made a set of matte black dice. Um, and they're, they're still sitting in my office, because I, you know, I haven't seen them my uh, my D&D group for a while now, because it's quarantine. Um, I'm tempted to remake them, just because I think I could make them better now. <laughs> At the same time, it's just like... Mm. They're already made. I might at least make it so that the numbers are a little bit better. Re-ink re them a little bit. Alright, here's, here's a D4. I think it is definitely a nice dark black. I'm going to do black and then this blue and gold.
So to finish everything up, um, for the most part, like the air has now traveled to the surface of the of the dice. Um, all the all the bubbles that have were you know in the you know maybe in the bottom of the of the resin they've now traveled up to the surface. So what I am going to do is spritz all of these with I'm starting to clear here. I don't know what I'll use that for. I'll just add the clear to a D4. And it'll just be an interesting layer at some point. Um, some sort of spare D4. Uh, actually, wait, I had... Oh, that's unfortunate. I had a D8 here that I set a, that had, was partially filled. Oh, well. I'm going to get a partially filled D4. That's fine. Scrape that out all the way. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Let's do this. That's fine. Get this bl glass back in. Sorry about that. I was gonna. I was gonna leave some in the bottom to make the paint chip. That is fine. Oh. I'm actually gonna leave that in there. I'm going to put that in the pressure pot as it is. That one can cure outside the pressure pot. That's fine. But we'll let this one cure and then I'll, I'll add another color to it later. That's fine. Okay, so to pop all the bubbles on the surface, uh, I have some rubbing alcohol and a little spritzing, spritz, bleh, I can't talk, spritzing bottle here. Maybe. There we go. Uh, this thing does not like to work well. I think it's just not airtight. It's my... Oh, there we go. Uh, uh, I think my I think my rubbing alcohol keeps evaporating out of here. But I need a sketching bottle. This pop, this breaks the surface tension on the resin, so all of the, all of the, the little bubbles on top should pop. So everything's, you know, at the top now, and then the rubbing alcohol should break that surface tension. Alright, those are all looking good, and then we can start putting some lids on, so it looks like I do want to make sure that there's no like air bubbles trapped in the lids too, because that can cause problems as well. Again, I put the resin on the lids just so we don't have air bubbles trapped between the lids and the the base part. Okay, is this this one? There's definitely some bubbles in there. There are some bubbles in there. Let's see. Oh, I think it's because there's already a layer in there. Sometimes they get a little bit funky. Um, the the dice the the air gets a little bit funky when you pour one layer and then let that cure and then pour another layer. Um, I I've, I've found because you know that it tries to like add resin on the outside where there's is it is I don't know I don't know how to explain that. Sometimes it just gets funky. It should turn out fine, but it's it looks weird now. Might require a little bit more sanding on my part. We'll see. Here's the D6 with the bug in it. And there's the D10. It has a big bubble on top. So that is okay. The big bubbles I can just pop with my manually. I 
purple there. I don't want purple in that. Okay. And there's an air bubble trap in the corner. Come on, get out. Uh, I think we're good. And I don't want to push these down. I just want to make sure that the lids are in the, the right place. Because um, I don't want... I don't want to like squish all of the excess resin out that we're going to need once it's in the pressure pot. Right, but I do want to make sure that it's in the right place. All of the little the little keys are lined up so that it can fall into the correct spot. So I, I don't want it, you know, I don't want to squish all that resin out, but I do want those to end up flush once once push comes to shove. Okay. It's hard to tell if there's bubbles on this one. It's so dark. Alright. That's in place. So once I, once I get all these lids on, um, I'm probably going to call it for tonight, just because I need to go fill the fill the pressure pot, and I might need to fill the the uh, air compressor. I, it's hard to t I don't have my glasses on at the moment, so it's hard to tell. in there. What's that doing? Just a moment. Let's see if I can get this big air bubble out. I don't know where this came from. Excuse you. Please get out of there. Why are you, why is there a big air bubble? Okay. There we go. I've already put the lid on this one now. There's a few little air bubbles in there, but I think we should be okay. We've got enough extra resin that hopefully everything will, will fall into place. same thing over and over again at this point. Just kind of putting lids on everything. Put the lid on here. Take this out of out of the way down here. And I'm just gonna stack this a little bit. This lid's maybe a little bit thin actually. Maybe I should have made a slightly thicker look, lid for that. Oops. So do I do make my my own molds. Maybe I should do that on a stream at some point again. It's been a while since I've showed, shown my mold making process. I usually do those on like Monday and Tuesday though. I wasn't really planning, I don't think I'm planning on making molds this week. I have to look at my, my calendar. I usually do that every other week. I should have mentioned before, but... Hopefully, this, they show up a little bit better this time than this guy. I do want to take a picture of that die. Let's see what the person thinks of that. Right. I usually pull these out and put them on here instead of doing it while they're on the thing because I can see it a little bit better. Make sure I have everything in the right spot. Okay. Definitely a bubble here. I can see the bubbles. Okay. Mm, I'll probably just put the this one's the black. Let me wipe these off before I try and pop any of the bubbles on the clear one again. All right.
Yeah. Well, there's the zero, so it'd end up with a whole bunch of with a big air bubble in them. Seems like. I mean, it makes sense. There's no place for the, the air to escape, really, once there's resin on top of it, but... There we go. Got that one. And that definitely has some air bubbles in it. Definitely has some... Why is my hair right here? What is my hair doing here? Stop that. Go away. I don't want you. Ah. I need a haircut. <laughs> I don't know if that'll fix this issue in particular, but... Why is there, uh... I don't know why there's some air getting trapped in these. Okay, I think we'll be okay, but... Put a lid on there. I don't know why there's... Oh my... That's really annoying. My, my gloves are just sticky enough that, like... Hair likes to stick to them and then they get, it gets caught places. Okay. Oh, I feel like I've been, I, I think I've been like streaming like longer and longer each time. Oops, let's put that on the correct direction, that might help. Not longer and longer each time. I mean, I did like a six hour stream the other day, which was just unheard of. I haven't done a stream that long before. I think the longest I'd done before that was like five, five hours or so. But gosh, I've been doing like, looks like I'm going to do about a four hour stream this time. I usually do like two and a half hours. I guess I was just waffling for, for a while there. I tend to do that to be fair. I just I just uh, talk a lot I guess. Don't actually get things done. I feel like that's the story of my life. Talking a lot and not getting much done. I'm just, like I said, I'm just kind of wiggling this, in, I'm wiggling this into place a little bit, just trying to make sure that it's lined up. Okay, I just have some bubbles in the, in the eight here. I've noticed with D&D &D dice that, like, all of them have, like, the highest number and the lowest number opposite each other. So, like, you'll have you know, the 1 opposite of the 20, and then you'll have the 19 opposite of the 2, and the 18 opposite of the 3, and all that s stuff. And all of the dice are like that, except for the D4, obviously. Because the, the, you know, the, D, the D4 doesn't really have opposites, opposite sides. And then the D8. I don't, I don't know why the D8 is different, because with the D8, oops, oh no, that's correct. Lid. Uh oh. No, what, what's going on? Is this the wrong lid? Oh, I think that's the lid for this one. Where's the lid for this one? Oh, here's the lid for this one. Well, why is it doing that? That's weird. Okay, just a second here. Just a second here. This is what I get for having two D8s with very similar lids. Brought that one upon myself. Okay. Why isn't that fitting? It's not the correct lid. Apparently did two D8s with very, very similar um, marks on them. Uh, keys. There we go. That's the words. word I'm looking for is keys. Alright, alright, alright. That's that one. Let's do this one. This one's got a couple bubbles on the surface again. This one has a bit there. And this up here. And then I think that is 
everything. I think that's everything. Alright, I think that's everything. Got our, our black over there that's going to be our little, our little paint chip. Maybe I'll throw that on here too. Okay, well, I think that is everything for tonight. I'm going to go put these into the pressure pot um, and they'll sit there for the next you know, 24 hours or so, they can, they can cure in there, and I'll pull them out, and we'll see how things uh, turned out, but, um, I stream every Wednesday and Saturday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, so I'll be back again on Saturday, if you want to, if you want to come hang out again, uh, thank you for stopping by, hope everyone had a good time, and I hope everybody has a good evening, or, you know, morning, wh whatever time it is for you, I don't know, um, and I will hopefully see y'all later. So I'll see you when I see you. <laughs> okay, bye.